Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzone. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. I am your host, John Francis Fahey. Joining me as ever, you're going to like the way he looks, I Aaron P. it. It's true. 100% for real with that body right now, it's Aaron Joseph Peter. I mean, what do you want? I don't know. I mean, this is, this is me, warts and all. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't see the warts. Genital. Genital. Oh, Genital. <laughs> Play your cards right. Could be. To your right, my left, handsome Matt Rousseau, the Cape God, Gape God. Hello. Say. That's true. Yeah. Handsome, I do say that. Handsome Matt Rousseau. He's the goat, see? Ah, I'm the goat, see? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. You like that shit? Very good. Now, um, oh, Matt has a, a whopper of a profile. A little on the darker side. Yeah. But to lead things off, I wanted to uh, say, first of all, of course, <clears throat> folks, Patreon, $5 a month, extra show a week. Come on. What are you doing? That's where this little game we're about to play started, so you can hear a bunch of those over there. And uh, last time we, yeah, we had fucking fun shit about Elvis, and uh, it, it, was, really uh, it, was, it was really, really great. Anyway, we got to get to this game. Um, this is called The Fist of Death. If you folks don't subscribe to the Patreon, you don't know what this is. This is based on the five fingers of death from Sway in the morning. Um, and Aaron and I will be um, doing uh, various characters and celebrities in different situations that we have written for each other. For Matt to guess, Correct. that's right, and we have not seen. We have not seen what each other has right written. Here. These are these are upside down. They're on the fly, pal. These are right on the fly, and um, Matt has got his guessing hat on. He's got his his, his ears on. Mm-hmm. Now, Aaron, you got your tongue on, right? Oh, oh yeah, boy. I got my tongue on. on. Oh, that's cool. Now here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna flip this timer. We got 90 seconds, and you're gonna try to get as many points. One point. For the the character named by Matt, uh-huh. and another point for the situation. Mm-hmm. And in ninety seconds, we're going to see the kind of damage we can do, and then it's going to flip back to me, and then run round one will be over, and then I think we'll go two thirty. Okay. Okay. All right. I have ninety seconds this time. You have ninety seconds this time to get as many as you can. We'll see how many we can do. We're trying it out, folks. We're, we're just, you know we're 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 figuring it out. Yeah. Okay. Everybody ready? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Now. I'm sorry, miss. I, I can't wear that, Robert. I've got a little bit of a, an allergy. Or I, 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 I break, Michael Caine's having sex with a prostitute? I break out in, in hives. I, I can't wear a Connie. He's having an allergic reaction? From, from, oh, he's allergic to latex. <laughs> yes, you can skip. Well, well God damn it. I'm funny. Funny how, <laughs> like a clown, <laughs> got but like a like, like I, I amuse you. His kids. Oh, is it Ross Perot and Goodfellas? God damn it, Bobby! Oh, it's Hank Hill and, and Goodfellas. Okay, very good. <laughs> I went on a Tinder and I, I, I swiped right on a woman and I put on my best chain <laughs> and I did my best mohawk and I went over and she was a guy <laughs> Mr. T learned something about himself in a night <laughs> and he learned he loved it which is okay Mr. T, oh Mr. T for trans I, that's brutal <laughs> that's brutal too <laughs> hey hey yo Neo I got something to tell you. It's real funky code like this. <laughs> you the messiah, dog. That's out. <laughs> That's the time? It's time. Was that, was, was that Ice-T? No. No, that was... Uh, Tone Loke. Tone Loke. Oh, God damn it. I, That's right. Tone Loke. I know. I forgot. Yeah, it's Tone Loke. I forgot. Tone Loke has Morpheus. Mr. T was catfished. He was catfished. Oh, okay. Hang- that you really handled expertly. I was very, very. I put on my best chain. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't say the ones you didn't do. Oh, uh, I'm not. I'm okay, just the ones that I did do. Good, good, good. Hank Hill doing the Goodfellas Funny Owl and Michael Caine faking a latex allergy. Faking it? Mm, yeah, well, that's, I mean, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a throwback to uh, Heath Barcelona. Oh, oh faking okay. Faking a latex uh, allergy. Um, so, Aaron, you got to get your timer ready? And then you got to keep a track of the points for me. And I, can I put these skipped ones back? Should I put them yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put them back under there. 
Okay. Um, now I got to keep track of some points for you, and you get ninety seconds here. Huh? Ninety. Nine zero. Nine zero. Now, how many points did I get? That was six. It's a hot. I gave six, you, I so. gave you the catfish, even though Matt didn't quite get to saying it. Right. Yeah, I mean, I you know, in my I said mind, he learned something about it. Well, he learned he loved it. <laughs> yeah, but you got to really guess the situation. Well, I couldn't tell that he didn't enjoy it. That's what? true. What? I mean, not, what not, was not, it? nothing. Nothing had to what do with was it. it. It wasn't the acting. It yeah. Was, yeah. All right. Um, Just an, it's you know personal interpretation. Are you ready? You ready, Matt? Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Um, hold on. Sorry, it fucked up really bad. God damn it. <laughs> it fucked up really bad. You press timer. And go. <laughs> Here's the deal, man. <laughs> I'm looking for guys who want to do it and know how to deliver it. God damn, what's his name? Uh, here's, a, here's a deal. Oh, uh, I want to get slapped around, beat me, piss on <laughs> God damn, yeah, I can't remember his doing name. the Lord's work over here. Come oh, down. Daddy Day Lewis? No, no, <laughs> they only get harder from here. Go. No. I, okay. Um, <laughs> here's a uh, give us uh, give us <laughs> give us all your money and put it in the bag there, <laughs> and, we'll, and and the gold coins too, and all that there. John, the cashier's checks. Ringo robbing a bank. Got you. Got John, the, John Lennon robbing a bank. On George. Robert, Paul McCartney, Robin, a boom. Okay, okay. One of the Beatles. <laughs> Every time my fingers touch brain, I'm super fly TNT. <laughs> I'm the guns of the Navarone. <laughs> in fact, what the fuck am I doing in the back? You're the motherfucker should be on brain detail. We're it's, fucking switching. It's Trump and Pulp Fiction. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Nope. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm neither here nor there, you know? I don't consider myself that femme or that masculine, you know? I'm kind of riding the line, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, Orson Welles has... Uh, um... That's it. Okay. You, Orson Welles, no, that's in the time went up. Yeah, that's fine, that's okay. fine. You got five there. <laughs> I mean, I got five. Yeah. John nailed it. Okay, Who, so, uh, well, so it was it was yeah Donald Trump doing Sam and Jackson Superfly TNT monologue from Pulp Fiction. I hope you gave me that. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, Paul McCartney robbing that. a bank. Uh, Sean. Uh, uh, oh, Sean Connery. God yeah. damn it! I guess we should put that one away because I can't can't go back to that. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, the one I saw, I had to put away. Um. So now we'll go to two thirty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, Matt, this isn't going to take that long. Yeah. Guess. Guess good. I'm trying here. Okay. okay. Round two. And uh, Aaron, they only get harder here, pal. Yeah. All right. You know, so, but uh, you're, you're already doing better than me. Only by a point. Yeah. 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 And I, 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 had, I had a few more softball ones, in all fairness to you. I'm really, I'm really hyping you up here, pal. Thanks, pal. <laughs> okay. Matt, you got your listening ears on. Uh-huh. Aaron, take it away, pal. My name is Maxis, Maximus Aurelius Spendiferous, a father to a slaughtered son, <laughs> and a husband to a wife with the greatest. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I, Al, Al Pacino is, uh, is gladiator. Yes. I think that the world is not a club, but a, a spot. I don't, I don't know. Go on. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, nope. I was, gonna say, I was gonna say Sly Stallone doing something, but it's two homies hanging out by the crib. <laughs> And it's Friday, and you ain't got no job. Do like Reagan doing Friday? Doing, doing, um... Yeah. Hmm? What? <laughs> Wilbur! <laughs> you, you know that video of that guy getting fucked and dying by a horse? It was me. 
It's either, it's, either, it's either Mr. Ed or Nixon talking about that. You got that Mr. Ed. Horse, what's, the, what's the situation? It's the horse fucking video. I don't remember okay. the video. Got it. I remember, I remember this the This black guy, he was an actor. And he hired a couple of other black guys to beat his ass so he could get famous for the sympathy. <laughs> it's Gilbert Godfrey doing, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the, <laughs> I don't know what the I hate the bigotry of the Notre Dame mascot. <laughs> Us Irish people are a noble crew. John F. Kennedy takes a stand for the uh, yep. for the Irish or the uh, <laughs> for the malice. Well, 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 well I, I would say that. <laughs> A any time the thing vi vibrates, it's better than just a cold, still, latex dick. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart and the sex robot? Or, oh, or just close, some sort of, close, close. Some sort of self-pleasure? That is gr a grand total, Aaron. You have made it to 16 points. Thanks. <laughs> there, uh, that was great. That was, uh, thank you. That was Jimmy Stewart on why vibrators are better than dildos. Okay, I mean, the specificity is tough to guess. Hey, man, yeah, why? You, come on. He made a, he made a pretty I made good a point. Pretty good, pretty good case. I mean, it's shaking around. Uh, it does the same well, thing. What are you yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 every vibrator is a dildo, but not every dildo is a vibrator. The, the prop work, the specificity. Uh, JFK hating the fighting Irish mascot. Right. Gilbert yeah. Gottfried explains Jesse Smollett. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's that was the best one, one so That's far a good for one. me. Mr. Ed killed Mr. Hands. <laughs> Charlton Heston explains Friday the movie. I gave you, so I gave you, uh, if when you said Friday, that, that, anything you got right, I gave you. Yeah. So, yeah, I so when, you said, when, you, when you said Gilbert, uh, you got that. Um, so just, you know, do the same for me, man. I do. <laughs> Um, and then I skipped over these two, and I will just I do. put them back there for another day. Put them back for another day. And now, John, you've got five. Five, uh, trailing, trailing severely. So, Matt, I'm really going to need you here, buddy. Okay. Two minutes. I'll need you too there. And um, I believe in you. Two minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. Tell me one. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what uh, the best piece of uh, pussy you'll ever have in your life is? Is a young Jewish girl that just started hooking. Ross Perot playing the James Gandolfini. It's a, I'm, I'm, I'm a Texan, but I'm, oh, I'm, George, I'm no George Oh, George Bush doing the James Gandolfini role from... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I was born in the darkness. <laughs> you <laughs> merely adapted it. David Lynch's Bane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> there is a French champagne <laughs> fermented in the bottle. <laughs> Jealous. <laughs> Orson Welles' grape commercial or champagne uh, commercial. But yes. I, I don't. I don't. No, no. Oh shit! Uh, I I I am Groot. I I am Groot. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Groot, but I don't know who. I don't know who it is. <laughs> oh, these are good. Oh shit! One minute twenty seconds. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the spit man's free money. <laughs> <laughs> Jack I mean, Nicholas uh, doing, this, doing the spit man. Jack Nicholas is it, a golfer. Uh, Jack Nicholson. Yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the best at this. <laughs> a great steering wheel that don't fly off out of your hand. <laughs> Too, right. too small. <laughs> too small. My, Michael Caine, I don't know what. You have no good car ideas. <laughs> You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Woo! Um, 30 seconds, come on. God damn it. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, I failed you. I mean, I was supposed to look after your boy, and, and I, I, I let him go. You know what I mean? I was I was not with the butler. You know, I'm doing my best over here, but the guy who's going around in a latex suit, I don't know what the fuck he's going. He's out there in the fucking rain. No, Dennis I'm Frito, down here. Dennis Frito's out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, you. 
Wakanda forever. <laughs> Four seconds. Is it Pauly Shore? Is- oh, you <laughs> asshole. You blew it. Uh, oh, all 15. Good. All good. 15. Oh, that was good. Uh, thanks, buddy. That was really good. Wait, what Don't was share, share, share that last one. Uh, that, that was... Um, oh, shit. That was my... Uh, that was George McFly oh. as the Black Panther. Oh, yeah. Dennis Brina as Alfred Pennyworth, of course. Michael Caine doing the You Have No Good Car Ideas, Paul, from I Think You Should Leave. Oh. Bit of a deep cut. Of course, Jack That's Nicholson it. doing Spitman. David Lynch as Bane. Uh, George W. Bush doing Kendall Feeney from Killing Them Softly. Uh, very, very, very good. Uh, the ones I only half got or didn't even try, which were a lot. Uh, oh, I didn't get to some of these, so I'm not going to let them. Um, but I had to... I had to pass on, uh, or ones I didn't fully, <laughs> fully get. Uh huh. Um, you know, I, there was I. There was, these were very, very good. Do you these want to hang on to them? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, let's not. Let's not. Don't burn them. Let's not burn them. Yeah. Uh, especially if we can use them for guests. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Fifteen that, points. It went down to the wire on. It that did. Way, yeah. It did. That was fucking great, man. Good job, Matt. Very good job. Very, very good. Job good job by both of you. Um, and what, what time are we at? How long did that take? About 15 minutes. Fish to death, baby. Hey, baby. <laughs> if you like that, there's more of that on the Patreon. The Patreon. Uh, $5 a month. Check it out. Uh, um, we, uh, we are now going to hand it over to Matt. Matt has a, a grim, a grim profile, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's it. Mr. Ed killed... Mr. Hands. He sure did. Yeah, that's a good one. A lot of good ones. Sure Lots. was. Good job. A lot of good ones. <clears throat> all right. All right, lads. You got one by your feet, too, just so you know. Thanks. Uh, so today I got a, a story for you about uh, uh, family. Run through with religious belief. They got a uh, brutal leader, generational scheming, murder, mm. sex. Ooh. Described as worse than the Manson family. Oh, what? God damn it. Savagery. Dare I say, love? Mm. Oh, okay, I'm listening. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I was gonna, uh, I, I don't think we, I think we could skip a lot of uh, this opening part I was gonna do about the history of the Mormon church, but we could just touch on some very um, basic things. Burned over, di- burned, uh, burned over district, New York, you know, we've talked about it a, a bunch of times, with, especially with Victoria Woodhull, mm-hmm. spiritualists, Mormonism, uh, uh, they all come from the same area of New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, 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 mesmerism, right? All these quackery charlatan types. And uh, Joseph Smith, uh, uh, he was, uh, you know, around New York at this time. It'd be 1823 when he uh, prays in his bedroom and a spirit shows up and says, hey, there's, uh, there's some stuff in the woods. The guy's name is Maroney. He's God's messenger, Maroney. Hmm. And he oh, said, he's, uh, he's, I think he's a mob boss from Gotham City. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. yeah. Penguin, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he invented the, the radio, too. It, a really uh, thorough life. And, uh, Marconi. <laughs> yeah, I already put a feather in his hat. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, he said there's, uh, you know, there's the, this, this gospel, this, the, there's these plates in the woods that are gonna, you know, they're from God and they're gonna, uh, uh tell you the whole history of this area and, and of your people. Uh, and it's only a few miles away, which is cool. Wow. Of all the Just, places yeah. and all the gin joints and all the. And, uh, uh, and then Smith would, Joseph Smith would go get it, and Maroney would say, actually, no, not yet. Uh, and then over the course of four years, Maroney would eventually give it to him. And Joseph Smith's father himself had at least six visions of God. Now, um, how old is Joseph Smith at the time he's talking to Sal Maroney? Early teens. Okay. And um, but anyway, so eventually he gets the tablets, and he writes this book. Uh, Mark Twain would describe it as merely a prosy detail of imaginary history with the Old Testament for a model, followed by a tedious plagiarism of the New Testament. Huh. Huh. And Tell us how you really feel, Mark. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, but but it, it had a certain, uh, it had a certain uh, attraction, because it cuts out the middleman, this, this Mormonism. It cuts, you don't need the rabbi or the priest to be in mm. touch with God. And therefore, you are in, in direct con- communication with God, mm-hmm. right? You don't need some holy man to tell you. Uh huh. Which is a lot, a lot of the uh, born again too. Yeah, uh, yeah they yeah. put that on the uh, the thing. Uh, they want you to to uh, take the middleman out of your relationship with Christ and stuff. By the way, can we just say real quick? Uh, yeah. Uh, Harkening back to the uh, to the uh, the Orwell thing, mm-hmm. Mark Twain, you know, just writing books and reviewing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, both of them. Yeah, like it's a thing where you go like. 
man, I really wouldn't want to do that. But I, I'm, I really am glad they did. Well, he started. He started as a newspaper reporter. Of course, yeah, of course, so, yeah. So, yeah. But once you are, uh, uh, you know. A writer, proper. It seems like you'd be like, well, maybe I should get out of the way. Martin Scorsese won't even comment on movies, yeah, well, unless they're Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> but he won't even he won't even comment on uh, you know his contemporaries. Uh, his contemporaries yeah, yeah. work. Um, but also, maybe that's the most interesting person to review books. Well, yeah, I think right. part of it is that when your art form is writing, I mean, any chance you get to read the guy's writing is a treat, right? Yeah, like, mm. it'd be it would. It'd be one thing if Scorsese made a movie about other movies. Sure. Then that's kind of like a one to one similarity, I suppose. But like, yeah. When you like a guy's voice, you kind of want to hear what he has to say about other shit. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if the guy has a problem with it, it's like, well, you know what you can do is write in. Mm -hmm. Just answer it with more writing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Just just start a write off. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 uh, in in 1831, Smith says that God told them uh, Jackson County, Missouri is where um, the New Jerusalem was. Uh, the Missourians weren't a big fan uh, of, of of these Mormons coming in. No. And Smith makes an army. Uh, eventually, the, there's these terrible stories about the Mormons, and there's this fight. It's fighting back and forth. And eventually, uh, in Missouri, they uh, they end up killing a group of uh, 17 Mormons and uh, and some kids who were just in the area uh, at this mill. And uh, so they so the, like Mor- the the locals just rounded up Mormons and slaughtered them. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. What the fuck were they doing? Hey, get on anybody that's wearing a tie and a bike helmet. We're having us a lynching. Well, so, so so what happens is these these scary stories about Mormons uh, start getting scarier and scarier. You know, the the the, the, the lo- it's the game of telephone, right? And the Missouri governor Dude, it hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a game of uh, word of mouth. <laughs> Two cans and a string. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Missouri governor uh, makes a proclamation that says the Mormons must be treated as enemies and must be exterminated and driven from the state. So, like, the next day, the people, Jeez. some people in Missouri, they take it upon themselves. So the Mormons, uh, they surrender, and they're driven down to central Illinois, which is actually a great coincidence because God uh, told Joseph Smith that's, that's where, it is. It's where the, the next place will be. Oh, that's very, very yeah. helpful. Uh, but they eventually have— This the, way. Would have been helpful. Maybe was, was, he, was he not also arrested there in Missouri? Uh, I, I don't know if he was. He wasn't arrested in Missouri. Oh, I, I know he got a fraud charge somewhere, but I thought it was like Kansas. Oh, City. well, he he was repeatedly found guilty of fraud in New York, because uh, uh, he he would he would claim that he could find buried treasure, mm-hmm. and then eventually he couldn't, and he would he was taken to court a lot. Yeah, I wonder if he was just kind of like also like you know snatching up the ladies. Well, we'll get to that. So, you familiar with Mormonism? Uh huh. So so in in Illinois, uh, they eventually have the the second largest city in Illinois. Uh, after Chicago, they have about twelve thousand people in 1844, and uh, then he starts wearing military uniforms and he starts Not saying, good. "God said uh, we should build a hotel, and also I get all the money from it." <laughs> uh, and then he uh, he he starts saying, um, "Actually, you know, um, God." I talked to God, and he starts whispering into his friends, "Like God said, I should like take some more wives." Oh, we and, didn't want to say anything. And twice the Book of Mormon had already forbade it, uh, polygamy. Um, what idiot. the fuck? Doesn't he write it? No, God writes it, John. Oh! Uh, for, this is from the Book of Mormon. There should not be any man among you save it be one wife. Uh, and concubines he shall have none, for I, Lord God, delight in the chastity of women. Uh, Thou shalt love thy wife with all thy heart, and shall cleave her and none else. But so what Smith does is he kind of like starts this whisper campaign like, hey, you know, the thing is, though, that's for like the regular guys. The guys who are even uh-huh. closer to God, they're the ones that... They kind of need more pussy. Yeah. yeah. To keep them grounded. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, they just float off into heaven. I say, I, honestly, I can't hear them unless I get more pussy. Yeah. You know how sometimes if you put your ear to a shell mm-hmm. and you can hear the ocean, yeah. that's like with me and pussy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear and pussy. God. That's like with my balls slapping against your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like that. Uh, and uh, the, the nice thing is that God told him which uh, women uh, he could marry, even if they were already married. And it, it's like a divine cucking. And um, <laughs> very nice. It took three years, but eventually uh, God was able to convince him to take uh, 43 <laughs> uh, wives. Sick. Yo, I don't got all day, buddy. Yeah. Please. Uh, God, you drive a hard bargain. Ages 15 to 59, several sets Ew, of sisters. 59? Ooh, nice. No, that's nice. Well, Susan Sarandon, yeah. No, it's Is probably... she in there? 
but he's uh, probably some big Mormon jugs. But but this there, it, there, it wasn't completely accepted by the community, and and so uh, or, yeah, by, say, or by forty three women. Yeah, yeah. A, a, gr- a group of Mormons. They started a newspaper, and was and, it forty three men by any chance? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and when the, when they published their newspaper, Joseph Smith had their uh, press destroyed. Um, and the governor of Illinois, upon hearing this, he said uh, Smith should be put on trial. And he attempted to flee in the middle of the night. Apparently, one of his wives called him back, and then he came back in, and he, sur- he surrendered. He's like, "Quick, suck the fucking thing." Uh, he surrendered to the state of Illinois, and then uh, a mob broke into his jail and killed him. What? Yeah. That's how he died. Yeah. Dude, I did not know that. I no, know. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that. Fucking Jesus Christ, how the fuck did this charade carry on? So, Brigham Young takes over. Uh-huh. And so, uh, there, there was the... Brigham Young. Brigham Young. And hung. <laughs> and hung. Preferably <laughs> dumb and full of cum if you got it. <laughs> there, there was a debate among... They would say, oh, what should pass down to Joseph Smith's kids? Um... And then they would say, oh, it's supposed to go to the oldest one, but Joseph Smith wasn't even the oldest one in his family, so... No, 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 his wife was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Brigham Young makes this, like, you know, uh, pincer move, and he... Uh, oh, God. And he, he you know, he, he basically hears the news that Smith is dead and flee, and, like, is, is one of the first people back to the settlement and takes over the church and becomes the leader. And then, of course, he's like, well, I was, I was supposed to. I, I was supposed to be next in line. Joseph Smith said so himself. And people just buy it, huh? And uh, and, and he takes he takes the, the, the Mormons and he moves them to uh, the Great Salt Lake Basin, mm. Um, mm. where they were never heard of again, uh, mm. where they would settle and and um, multiply. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And and then in 1857 he introduces a new tenet, and this one is called the Blood Atonement. And um, sounds cool. <laughs> also features a pincer movement. It does. A temporal pincer movement. It's a temporal Cowboy movement. shit. And it, 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 among his marks, uh, remarks in this, this is 1857. He says, all mankind, all mankind loves themselves, and let the blood atonement principles be known by an individual, and he should be glad to have his blood shed. That would be loving themselves, you know, even unto internal exaltation. Will you love your brothers and sisters likewise when they have committed a sin that cannot be atoned for without the shedding of their blood? Will you love that man or woman enough to shed their blood? This is loving our neighbor as ourselves. If he needs help, help him. If he wants salvation, it is necessary to spill his blood on the earth in order that he may be saved. Spill it. That is the way to love mankind. Who wrote this shit? Uh, and so, you know, if if, uh, if, if if someone steps against you, you say, oh my, I feel terrible, but the only way you can reach heaven now is if I kill you. Dude, what the fuck? Well, this is in the Book of Mormon. No, this isn't. This th- is his a, later. This is a tenant that he, that he that, had. No, God told him this. That told Brigham Young. Yeah. Mm. You know what it does? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it it, uh, it does this uh, tasty thing, which is uh, the removal of husbands. Mm. <laughs> who who won't let you marry their wife? Yeah. 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 Oh, when I oh you. I gotta right. spill the blood. Oh, yeah. but, oh. I, I didn't know you would step to me like that. Yeah. You know? It's unfortunate. Yeah. No. So I saw you came in and watched, saw me balling your wife, but now you're like upset about it. It's bumming me out. And uh, I really want you to go to heaven so bad. Actually, I'm going to send you there now. Uh, now. Now, now, now. <laughs> now, now would be good. Now ish. <laughs> now, it, yeah. Now, and. Yeah, all you yeah. guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all you guys. Uh, okay, so. I should have brought my computer. Well, we'll touch on that later, maybe. Uh, Young would, uh, he would die of cholera in 1890. That's you um, drink some water tainted with shit. And uh, in order to uh, oh, be, in order to be less antagonistic <laughs> to the U.S. government, um, uh, this is my understanding. The uh, the the Mormon community or the the Mormon Church would renounce the uh, practice of polygamy, if not the doctrine. But they would but ne- not renounce the, the but practice. not the fucking murder. Well, it, well. I don't. They, think, they didn't care about that because they were killing Mormons mostly. I, I don't think they would argue that was necessarily the doctrine. Um, it was a tenet. Uh, even though there had been, you know, if there, there was, there was an instance where, um, a group of settlers passing through and were massacred. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the things you could do in the name of the blood atonement, uh, you know, the, there's a little, it was handy. Yeah. It was handy. Yeah. Uh, and so, so that's just kind of a setup to, to what we're going to get into. Cause we have to go back briefly to 1833, Benjamin Johnson, 
He's from the Burndot District in New York, one of them. And he arrives in Ohio uh, in 1833, and he joins the Mormon community. He's baptized shortly after. He becomes close with Joseph Smith and, and is one of his closest uh, friends. And Smith is one of the, the first people he tells, or Ben Johnson is one of the first people Smith tells about uh, plural uh, marriage. And in fact, then Smith goes, and also um, your sister. Mm. And Johnson goes, he's like, oh, this is... There's a lot to think about, but uh, mm-hmm. but he uh, eventually God uh, 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 comes to him and says, "This is come yeah, on, yeah, do it. Think about it." But I was fucking my sister. Oh, and uh, that wasn't popular yet. <laughs> yeah, and, Trailblazers. And, mm-hmm. and Joseph Smith marries uh, two of his sisters, um, and then then Joseph Smith tells Ben Johnson, he says, "You know what? God told me that you've earned it." And what so, a, a bowling? A, a plural marriage. Yeah, but not oh! your sister. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's a kind yeah. of a, gra- a yeah. gratitude game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. an MLM type of thing. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's an MLM. Yeah. It's a uh, you know what it is. It's a uh, multi level matrimony. It's uh, <laughs> it's not. It's 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 a it's an Eiffel Tower scheme. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a pincer movement. You get you get you know you get two sisters. You give two sisters. You get two sisters. That's right. And that feels good. It feels real good. <laughs> I mean, it can. I imagine not for everybody. It makes us practically related. (laughs) Did you get there? Did you see that? Uh, Uh, And the fun we'll have. (laughs) So, uh, uh, um, so, so uh, Smith also makes uh, Ben Johnson a high priest, one of the most exalted. Um, Oh, first of his name. (laughs) Did I got a breaker of balls? I got to get exalted. Now, after Joseph Smith's murder, Ben Johnson, uh, he becomes a, uh, an ardent supporter of Brigham Young. He follows the Mormons to Missouri and then to Utah. And eventually he would have a family that, that uh, while well, he was alive, spanned five generations uh, with 800, um, you know, progeny. Descendants. Hmm. Descendants, thank you. And um, Progeny was a nice word, too, though. Whatever, man. One of his grandsons, <laughs> one of his grandsons is, uh, was a boy named Alma Dyer LeBaron. A L M A D A Y E R LeBaron. He will go, Dyer LeBaron. He'll go by Dyer from now on. Doya. Uh, Doya. Uh, according to Alma Dyer LeBaron's side of the family, he was Ben Johnson's favorite grandson. Mm. Now, remember, the other, other parts of the family don't necessarily agree with this or didn't, or I don't know if they still talk about oh, it. Oh, yeah, all the kids with fucking three eyes because they're banging <laughs> sisters every day. <laughs> Now, uh, that's not how it works. They're not banging their own. Sure, it is. It's a half sister. Uh, Maybe he was a lovely boy. You don't know. The guy's got 800 grandkids. He picks this one guy. <laughs> I'm, what are you talking I have no, dude, I'm sure the Christ little Baron is a nice kid. Thanks, man. So, so uh, there's a friend of Ben Johnson's tells uh, Dyer that uh, Johnson buried a box in his yard and it's, it's, it's yours and. Dyer opens the box, and in the box is just, you know, so there's a poem, and there's some, so, some knickknacks, head. and uh, there's also a questionnaire that Ben Johnson filled out oh. and, and about Joseph Sweepstakes? <laughs> about, you know, about Joseph Smith. And in it, he says some things like, like, what's something Joseph Smith taught you? And he, and, and he writes, I can't talk about that until the end, of, until I'm really old, and I can only be in person. I'm one of the... And so um, Dyer uh, makes an assumption that this is like something real. Like mm-hmm. Joseph Smith, you know, told this guy a secret. Right. He'll never, we were like, oh. Something, oh. something important. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, 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 I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> and Also, uh, these guys love digging fucking holes, don't they? Jesus Christ. Oh, I mean, what else was there to do back then, John? I guess, They didn't even yeah. have the telephone. The minute you think it's fucking buried, it's like royalty for some shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 in some yeah. shallow bullshit. <laughs> like, oh, well, if it's buried, it's got to be divine. Like, nobody <laughs> digs. There's nothing to do but dig. <laughs> you know what I would have done? I would have would a nice big gold box, shovel a ton of shit in yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, hey. Hey, what's The angels that? told me there was a big old oh, box of shiny shit. Yeah, they said to eat it. <laughs> oh, he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't want to chew that shit up. <laughs> swallow it. Yeah. Come on, chop, chop, swallow it. <laughs> so I, I should say uh, um, uh, the majority of my research comes from Scott Anderson's book about uh, the subject we're talking about today. And uh, also uh, 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 Ruth Werner, who wrote a book about her time in the family. Mm. And uh, in various articles, uh, uh, some of them 
uh, written by the family and some Mormon blogs. It was. You're it, saying it, what? What family exactly? The LeBaron family. Okay. Of the Chrysler LeBaron. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so uh, Dyer makes this uh, determination, this belief that Ben Johnson, um, who he's, uh, he's he 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 believes that it was Ben Johnson, and not. Brigham Young, who was supposed to be the next in line for Joseph Smith's mantle. Oh, man. We're that getting, was we're the getting, great secret? Yes. We're getting some Game of Thrones shit going. I, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, his name was Aegon Targaryen. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? He's the high priest that was promised. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a ball back like you've never seen. <laughs> He's been whipped into so many assholes that <laughs> just started getting it's, dragged it's, down. It's, it's been weathered smooth. <laughs> There's not a wrinkle on the goddamn thing. <laughs> Look at that old wine skin. <laughs> <laughs> I can ask some. <laughs> <laughs> You've earned it. And so, so, so Dyer determines that uh, okay, his grandfather Ben Johnson was supposed to be the next in line, which makes him, you know, this, the ultimate, uh, uh, the word on 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 all of this on um, the history. And, and then he he uh, would later say that his grandfather also one day. Uh, put his hands on Dyer's head and said, when I die, my mantle will fall upon you. Hmm. And he said it much more, but like, upon, uh, as so-and-so, uh, upon reaching heaven, the Some other fire bullshit. fell upon them. And Equus begets Bequus. Bequus, who begs Bequus, who lived three Bequus. score years. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And now, you know, like that type of thing, it's all good, you know, when you're a kid, but... Uh, it's 1923, and Dyer's 37, and he has traveled back to Utah. From uh, the family would would move to uh, Mexico uh, here and there because uh, when you had to flee for um, polygamy, you could go to Mexico; it'd be a safe place. And oh yeah, that's the Romneys. And uh, was that true? Yeah. Huh. Uh, Romney's dad, I think. Um, hmm. Senor was Romney born, was born in Mexico. It's you. Ah. Mitt. Romney's yeah. father was born in Mexico. They have fucking like three football teams of kids attacking pinatas. Yeah. Everybody gets one piece of candy. <laughs> yeah, no caffeine, though. <laughs> so Dyer's in this boarding house in Utah, and he's on it because he's traveling. He's traveled to Utah because he has some, some questions he needs answered, and, and God has told him this is the place to have them answered. And one of the questions is, was Ben Johnson the rightful heir? And another one of his questions is, um, shh. Should I marry this 18-year-old who worked at our house for the last few years? Who was traveling with me and my son? Good question. Yeah, that's a really good question to ask God. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask you something. Uh, uh, not like what the meaning to existence is. Or- yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, should I like? I like maybe like create like a bunch of people in the church on behalf of my grandfather's crown <laughs> or mental. <laughs> and also like, should I be balling that girl that's like been hanging around the house and stuff? Because like, like she looks like real- I, I, I got. Looks- I can ask her, but like, why would I ask her when I just ask you? She looks like real good, but the thing is, like, if you tell me it's all good, then I'll tell her it's all good, and that'll like, that'll kind of sell it like much better. (laughs) (laughs) Like, if I said that you said it was dope, yeah, like, she'll be like, sick. She'll be like, oh, fuck, that's now I'm kind of amped about it. But like, if I'm just like, yo, this is kind of my idea, she might be like, oh, I don't even know about that. Cause like, she's like, uh she'll be like, I'm sort of like chased, and plus, like, it takes me like, Upwards of like you know forty five minutes to get my underwear off and stuff, <laughs> and like and like she's already eighteen, so she doesn't have a lot of good years left. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like you know it takes all that time to get like you know the velcro and everything like out of there. It's like you know there's a lot of time to change your mind. So like if I just say it's all good with the Lord, um, you know it'd go a long way. Also like should I kill Brigham Young? <laughs> <laughs> He's already dead at this point. Oh cool. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. get back to me on the ball slapping on assholes thing. <laughs> So, so uh, in the middle of the night, he's woken up by this uh, this hand on his shoulder, and he wakes oh. up, and it's his uh, his it's, it's his grandfather Ben Ben who, who's in heaven, and he's uh, Olympian Ben Johnson, <laughs> yeah, and he's, Ben Kenobi. He's wearing a golden crown, and he has a scepter, and uh, everyone gets one in fucking heaven, huh? He's got a well, no, no, these are symbols that Joseph Smith said he was the true uh, the heir. He's the chief. Yeah. And then also he says the only way for you to reach celestial heaven in in, uh, in, in their idea of heaven there's celestial terrestrial oh, uh, terrestrial, terrestrial kingdom molestial, and terrestrial and molestial. Right, molestial. Right. so so they still have they that's have my uh, favorite <laughs> yeah that's my favorite they still have levels of like coolness yeah dude, oh, it's yeah. MLM dude yeah and uh, terrible life of God 
And he says, uh, he says the only way for you to reach celestial heaven is for you to take up polygamy. And Dyer's like, man, I'm glad I brought that chick with me. Dude. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, I'd just be, I don't know, jacking Honestly, off. I've been standing out here with my scepter in my hand. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You like those Marvel movies? <laughs> we go to Celestial Heaven. Yeah. You ready to go? We just, like, we, like, bypass Melestrial Heaven. And I, I mean, we can, we can take a detour if you want. I mean, but I got some uncles there. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> They took me to Melestrial Heaven quite a few times when I was a kid. So, but so is, is Terrestrial the one where you are uh, awarded a planet. Isn't that kind of one of the things? They give you a planet? No, I don't believe so. They don't have that shit? I don't believe any of it. <laughs> I, I, no, I, so, so I there's everything but that. <laughs> planet. Planet. There, well, there's terrestrial and telestial. Telestial? Uh, yeah. That's like on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> are you telling me uh, it's Nick at night, basically? <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if you get a planet, but you know, maybe one you get the heavens, one you get a planet, Planetoid. the other one you have to live on a planet. I, uh... Anyway, so if you worship my hog for a couple of years, we get to live in the Donna Reed show. It's gonna be like super tight, You're like good vibes in the 1950s. I can leave it to your beaver. <laughs> there's, there's only there's only so much there's only so much de- you know explaining I can get, go into. Uh, or or look up. <laughs> no, <I'm> pretty <laughs> without, without you know, what, I, I, falling I, for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, it, honestly, it's sounding better and better to me. But I, guy, and correct me if I'm wrong. I know we have some some Mormon listeners that have, have hey, actually shout out to you have actually praised our, uh, our our Mormon coverage before. We are failing them today before this one. Uh, but I should I should note that this is an outlier. Uh, yeah. This story I'm going to tell. Yeah, but uh, let us know. Like let us know, especially, especially the patrons. If uh, if you know about um, this planet idea that I heard on a whim, I'm just repeating fucking rumor, basically. Yeah, let game me, of let, telephone. Let me know if that shit's true. Yeah, it's dangerous. Well, you're. I mean, don't tell us if it's true or not, because like. Also, keep the paragraphs short and um, <laughs> use incantation. Yeah, uh, just say what the the, the celestial and uh, the. We can look it up. No, we can. We, can, no. we got uh, other shit to do right now. Yeah. Okay. So let's. We got to come up with stupid situations to do impressions of. <laughs> so so Dyer was also told uh, that he should uh, take the, his family and move into Mexico. Uh, mm-hmm. When he he so he does that, but then. Uh, they're stuck in the Mexican Revolution, so God tells them to move back to the U.S. and wait for the revolution to die down, yeah. and then move back. You know, it's like sometimes God is just like sometimes he can't he can't get through on the celestial. Yeah, <laughs> it's a back in action, fool. So they go back to Utah, and uh, the community in Utah gets wind of this pl- plural marriage thing, uh, and they are not a fan. Really, and one of his sons tells uh, Dyer that he heard that they were planning to lynch the family, whether it's true or not, who knows? And so they flee. Uh, back uh, back to Mexico to uh, family's house in uh, Colonial Juarez. Colonial Juarez. It's a fundamentalist uh, Mormon community back then. I don't think it's as fundamentalist. I don't think now, Juarez is very, very Mormon. Yeah, yeah. No, but, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small yeah, yeah. area within. It's not, they don't have the... Uh, and they're excommunicated, the, the LeBaron family is excommunicated uh, from Utah. Like John Wick? Yeah. Excommunicado. Son of a bitch. Now, uh, so while they're living in this uh, this this uh, Colonial Juarez, um, the family would would later say say that they were were shunned because of the polygamy. Uh, residents in town would not quite agree with that history. Oh. Um, <laughs> we loved it. There's one man named Herman Hatch. He 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 who grew up with the LeBaron children. He said. It was just their pride. They were invited out to all the things everybody else was invited to, but they never felt free in going because they were embarrassed. Another woman named Rita Johnson said, they were accepted, but they were never socially equal. I mean, they kept to themselves, but it wasn't because that's the way we wanted. It's the way they wanted. It was their choice. They were living in Mormon town. They believed in a different kind of Mormonism, and they just chose to stay pretty much to themselves. Hmm. Uh, The the barons would say- I'll be in my house fucking the wives. (laughs) If the balls be a slapping, don't come a rapping. The, the LeBaron kids would say they were beaten up and bullied in school uh, and that their their um, their mother was like allowed to teach kids piano, but they weren't allowed to like hang out with other kids. The other kids weren't allowed to hang out with them. This so, you know, there's um, there's differing accounts, man. There's differing accounts. But eventually in, in uh, Colonial Wars, there'd be seven sons to die a LeBaron. Uh, there was Ben, uh, Ross Wesley, we would, would go by Wesley from uh, Alma, Florin, Verlan, Joel and mm. Ervil. Oh, mm. Ervil. Yeah. Oh, God. What? A- <laughs> yeah. It's a deep Dutch heritage there. Murfling. Smurfling. Groot. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ronald Reagan as Groot. 
Is that what that's what I was supposed yeah, to do? Yeah, it's hard to do. Well, well. You can't say well. No. He doesn't say it. But uh, home, home life was not easy for the children. Uh, Her, Herman Hatch uh, would say, uh, the boys were as good fellows as we had around here, but they all, through their lives, had a great amount of pressure, mental pressure put on them in their home life. That was wrong with the whole mess of them. Parents had been excommunicated and spent their lifetime self-justifying themselves and shoving their beliefs on those kids. Then those kids would go and they listen to their Sunday school teachers and their priesthood, priesthood leaders tell them something different and they were just confused, you know. Tremendous amount of pressure. Just kept going on and on and on until it turned into a mental disorder. Uh, the three uh, women, uh, the three girls in the family would all suffer delusions of grandeur or paranoia. Nice. Oh. Uh, multiple of them would go... Uh, um, to the mental like, institutions. One of them would have a psychotic episodes. Uh, all seven boys uh, of this of 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 seven, six of them would uh, claim to hear voices. Five would have hallucinations they interpreted as divine revelation, and four would become heavily involved in the rest of this story. Uh oh. <sighs> The, the oldest of them was uh, Benjamin, and he, he was like, you know, he was the big, strong, he was like the first, like, real star of the family. Named after the Gramps. Yes. Uh, and he would be the first to claim that uh, he was given his father's mantle. Ooh. Um, his father, who, of course, was the rightful heir to Joseph Smith, mm -hmm. uh, from, passed down from his grandfather. Uh, and Benjamin would claim that he was the one mighty and strong prophet, the successor to Joseph Smith. Uh, he was also schizophrenic, and he saw visions. Shit, man, what the fuck is going on? Uh, yeah, Matt, what's going on? Uh, he, he, <laughs> Why are they all crazy? Uh, he, he, um, he, History of, I guess. He, he wrote in 1953, the perils of the prophecy of his own life struck my mind with such unusual force that I soon afterward retired to the hill nearby to inquire of the Lord, further concentrating the matter. I asked the messenger who the messenger would be, was told that I would be that person. Mm. And so he went up into a hill, and God told him he would be God's messenger. What a coinky dink. Not you. The next guy. <laughs> Someone <else. laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Can you wake him up for me? But, but, but Joseph, God also told him that he would face a lifetime of persecution. Mm. And so, you know, when, when, when he's not fitting in, it fits God. the prophecy. Fucking A, man. Right? Yeah. Fuck uh, all you motherfuckers, God was right about me. And eventually he, he convinces uh, his brother Alma that he is the one true and mighty. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the baddest motherfuckers of all. As Alma said he didn't believe him, then Alma said he had a dream once of him and Benjamin and uh, a friend of their, their sister and their sister's boyfriend. They're riding down to Mexico in a pickup truck. And then like two in weeks later, truck. two weeks later, uh, the, the, the sister's boyfriend uh, asked for her hand in marriage. And they rode down to, uh, they rode that pickup truck on the, the highway. What year is And it this? was that same moment. This would be, uh, this would be 19, 1950s. Okay, so early pickup 1950s. trucks existed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Having a dream he got into a truck, though, is not that wild back then. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they had already done that multiple how, times. Yeah, how, how most shit happened. Yeah. yeah. He just had a dream of a memory. Yeah, he yeah. didn't get into a UFO. Yeah. Yeah. Get into, well, was, get into a subway car and go, I'm glad you brought that it's up. Ju it's just oh. like my dream. <laughs> Uh, and so I've they, been here before. Yeah, they they moved. Their their father had a, a vision uh, of a of a new uh, place that they would grow up, uh, that he would build. It was about fifty miles, uh, I think it was south of Colonial Juarez, and it was called uh, Colonial Le Baron, and it was a small series of shacks and dirt roads. And mm. uh, but uh, but uh, according to Ruth Werner, who grew up there, like it. it um, eventually, the, the the land was cleared and planted with orchards and pecan trees and gardens and cattle was brought in and the town grew and flourished. Anderson has a slightly uh, less positive view, <laughs> just a series of shacks and uh, you know, there's no there wasn't any a lot of buried water boxes and, of shit. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> cow shit everywhere. But I imagine as a as a kid growing up, you you know if. Hey, here's a nice shiny piece of shit. Yeah. What is this? The fucking Garden of Eden or yeah. something? Uh, the snakes talk to me, Pa. <laughs> uh, ben, uh, so Ben runs his church on the homestead there, uh, or nearby the homestead there. And uh, while he's doing it, he manages to um, gain some new job titles. Or, uh, he is also, so he's the one mighty and strong, but now he's also the, the elephant strangler, the bull catcher, the eighth priest, the world championship, the world champion, the lion of Judah, 
And he, he even devised a... King of the castle. He, he devised a, a, <laughs> a test to prove... One of the litmus, litmus tests to prove his uh, legitimacy uh, was that he could do more push-ups than anybody else. Cool. And oh. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and whoa, Christ, the child did many push-ups and yes. chin-ups and lat raises. <laughs> <laughs> and though did Christ the Lord love to strangle an elephant before his daily bread. Woe be to the serpent who cannot <laughs> do the downward dog. <laughs> <laughs> or do the dog downward. <laughs> Uh, and uh, but he, he he was able to um, uh, so Alma joined to uh, Ervil uh, the brother joined even Ervil yeah he, he like also, the Tito of the game yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and Ervil <Herbal> too <laughs> <laughs> he's the Ringo the Tito you know God bless us everyone that's right Ervil. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. They even, they even, uh, he even uh, convinced a, a cousin who had come down, a, a local fruit peddler. Oh, <laughs> but he. <laughs> I'm some sort of a fruit peddler myself. <laughs> Don't tell the wives. <laughs> the missus is. is. <laughs> local fruit peddler. He just looks at me and goes, oh! <laughs> it's like I should have always known. <laughs> oh, you almost lost that beer there, didn't you, champ? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, also, sometimes he would roar like a lion. Yeah. Meow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he never, Wolf! he he'd never seen a lion, so he really didn't know how it sounded. Yeah, yeah no, none of them. He was yeah. lying. Yeah. Fucking uh, elephant strangler, dude, shut up. Well, obviously, if you'd seen him do it, you wouldn't say that. Dude. Yeah, but I'll, like the elephant will strangle you with its dumbass. It'll peanut, sneeze on you. And yeah, peanut eating nose. I mean, plus I, elephants are nice. And have you sweet. seen an elephant do push-ups? I don't think yeah. Oh, have you yeah. ever seen an elephant's dick <laughs> do push-ups? Yeah. So eventually, uh, um, he but he needs uh, he needs the confirmation from his father. Now he had been telling people that his father had said that he had the mantle, but he needed to actually have the mantle I need you to from say his it, father. Papa. And his father's on his deathbed, so he travels to his father's deathbed, and he just basically yells at him. For Give me the mantle. Hours on end. Yeah, schizophrenic. Yeah. Yeah. Until his father is just like, okay, fine. All right, man. You know it's all bullshit, right? So, so with uh, with his brother, I believe his Alma uh, present, his, they they take his dad's hands and they put it on his head and say, "Oh yeah, dad, oh, dad gave it to Ben." They did a magic thing. Yeah, and then Jesus uh, Christ! Uh, uh, a few weeks later, Dyer uh, dies, and um, Dyer yeah. dies. Yeah, we and and Ir Irvil leaves Ben's church, uh, and then uh, why does Irvil leave? Well, you know, because all of a sudden they're like, well, maybe, I don't know. I don't really think you. He had a robust are. solo career. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, stay tuned. Uh, and I'm going to found the Masters of Ervil. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and and a bunch of people would, would you know, kind of leave the, leave the church. Or the, Ben's church. You know, most of the people... Yeah, would be, the one where he was screaming all the time? Yeah, yeah. Mad and, well, and, the, and the cousin, Owen, he would uh, he would go back to Utah and go to a, a mental hospital. Uh, and then he would leave, and he, he came back, and uh, uh, when he returned, he had some revelations uh, that God had called him to visit the city of Enoch, which is on the North Star, and so... Um, which is on the North Star. Yeah, so him and his family started... Um, they they um, That's a long, long the, trip. When the day arrived, they, um, they went and... Uh, they had been sun tanning a lot because they didn't want to burn up in the atmosphere on their way back. Smart. Jesus Smart. Christ. You and gotta so, prepare. You gotta get this is still all in Juarez. You gotta get a good yeah. base. Yeah. You gotta get a good base tan. So when you're out there next to the star. What about a good base? Like a turkey. Hey, that's Thanksgiving. I mean, it's, it's a different holiday. <laughs> so on, the city of Enoch. Yeah. Which is on the North Star. Which is on the North Star. The smoldering, burning inferno of the North Star. Well, and when, you know. When which you burned out millions and millions of years ago. Well, Maybe. not if you get there quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Enochian you is the up. language that John D. Uh, 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 received from the angels. Mm-hmm. It all ties. Enochian. 
Yeah, it's it is a, a potato-based pasta. That's exactly right, Aaron. So, um, so on the day that Owen is with his family waiting for um, the um, the spaceship to take him away, uh, uh, Joel. <laughs> so it was going to be a spaceship, not not god not magic. No, it was a spaceship. No, man, they're not walking there, yeah, bro. Well, dude, like I don't know, angels drive. Can you start asking smart questions on the show? Like, I didn't know that, like, angels required a Class C driver's license in order to have interstellar space flight. I thought they could have, maybe have, like, some sort of Doctor Strange wormhole or something. I thought there were, like, portals, like, you know. I didn't know there had to be, like, an interstellar <laughs> fucking Just railway. stop, like, global warming or whatever. Like, I thought, like, maybe we could just, like, bypass it with, like, a wormhole or Is something. Is it, like, a tap card situation? <laughs> so, so uh, uh, as, as, uh, as, as Owen and his family were on the roof, uh, the brother Joel came by, and he started yelling at him, you know, knock it off. And uh, this, this- He knock it off! And uh, there was a, this, this big argument. Uh, Joel and Ervil then left to go tell the authorities. They were standing on the roof for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this was, uh, what, are, what are you going to tell the authorities? Well, that are, We're arguing because some people are on the no, roof? No, well, they'll probably be like, hey, like, they're going to hurt themselves. Break it up. They're going to hurt themselves. Now, there was, uh, this is, um, they, they showed this in the HBO program, The Leftovers, with Millerites. Mm-hmm. So they're standing on the roof waiting. They're to not the up. first people to do this. Yeah. Nor will they be the last. Yeah. You, you, know, you got to get up. You got to get on the roof. Yeah. You got to get up. You got to get up. So eventually, um, the um, <laughs> Owen Owen instead he said, "Well, it, it started getting dark, and um, uh, Owen told his family that the saucer would land in the, down the road. So he he led them down uh, down <laughs> the road, naked and barefoot." Hmm. Um, and uh, and they found uh, they were gathered around they were found the next morning um they were gathered around a burnt this is Anderson they were gathered around a burnout campfire Owen and one of his wives appeared to be totally insane their eyes glassy and their speech incoherent the others were embarrassed and sad some of the children had blackened faces from trying to eat charcoal left over in the fire huh? it, had, it had been a busy night in the orchard one of Owen's wives had had sex with an extraterrestrial oh an, huh. an act which her husband interpreted as meaning she was now resurrected. She had then passed her resurrection status on by having sex with her husband and his other wife. Mm, good idea. When Owen had received instructions to have sex with the dog, he finally suspected he wasn't hearing God at all, but the odious voice of the devil. Jesus Christ! Mm. Could have been Ervil. Mm. Well, smart. That's that's the way. That's how you get one over on him. Yeah. He was eventually ordered to leave the colony. Uh, he, Before he fucks a dog. Yeah, he was eventually male or female dog. They don't say. No morality. The devil doesn't care. Maybe it's a non-binary dog. The devil may care. You know, uh, the he, North Star is the dog star. So maybe it was a god. Oh, good point. He, he would eventually... Fuck, he, he could have fucked the dog went to heaven, man. He would eventually be deported back to, uh, back to Canada and uh, committed to a mental hospital. Around the same time... So as, everyone's insane. Yeah. Around wrong. the same time this is happening, Ben has been gone for a little bit. And they fi- he, he, he is... Um, Discovered, uh, he's in the middle of an intersection in Utah mm. doing push-ups. Nice. And uh, for for about half an hour, he does. Uh, it takes him two hundred push-ups. Oh, good. Half, half an hour, which is uh, yeah. not. That's not that that's great. Not that then they great. drag him to the mayor's mansion. Uh, well, <laughs> the yeah, the state mental hospital in Provo. <laughs> Uh, you win. He would be there until 1958. He'd spend the next 20 years in and out of mental hospitals before he committed suicide by jumping off the Arkansas Bridge. Oh. Well, maybe he missed the flight. Yeah. Well. Hold that saucer. Should have fucked the dog, dude. Should have mind the gap. Yeah. Can we take a break? <laughs> sure. Okay, because uh, I, I need to get some drinks, but uh, this is real good stuff. <laughs> he should have fucked the dog. We're not even at the dark stuff. He did, he, oh. Ben was the one that was going to fuck the dog? No, Owen was. Owen. Owen. Ben. Owen. Ben. All right, we'll be right back, folks. And we're back. <laughs> it's getting out of hand, Matt. And I'm scared. I told you in the break I was scared. Yeah, yeah, you did. And you looked at me like I was some, uh... uh a sissy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, less, a lesser man. A lesser yeah. man. A lesser man. I don't believe so. Uh, so, uh, just to take a quick step back, uh, do you actually want to hear about the three kingdoms of heaven? I do. I yes. Do. yes. There's only three? So, uh, Apostle Paul uh, says there's uh, a... Uh, the Apostle Paul of, like, the real one? Well, like, who else? So, I don't know. No, no, from... Uh, the I don't know, some other Paul, fucking Paul's American boutique. Paul. <laughs> Paul's boutique. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, are you talking about Paul? Well, if you, I would. <laughs> just it, like Paul in Corinthians, does that help? Yes. So okay. The so if you let me finish Paul. the sentence. <laughs> Cocksucker, let him finish. So the celestial That's kingdom is the highest, most glorious of the degrees of glory. Which one? Celestial. Mm. celestial. Of course, of course. Yeah. The heavens. Terrestrial is symbolically represented as the moon. Is uh, 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 does not give no. forth as much light as the sun. Not, uh, not much but, going on here. But it gives more light when viewed from Earth than the stars. Uh, the and fuck? telestial is the the third one, and uh, that's so y- you can. So there's three heavens. Yeah. Let them finish. And you can you can make your way up through them, but you're still not better than anybody who's already there. So don't even try it. The fuck? What? Like you can you can cl- you can climb your way to a higher. But you're heaven. not better. You're not better than anybody who's the already point? there. No, 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 no. Because no. you're better than you, then you're better than the people who didn't do it. You know? Yeah, that's the whole you know. point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, dude, Paul was full of shit. It's very, I don't think Paul made all that up. No, no, he only made, he, he probably only said there's three kingdoms in heaven. Yeah, no, he, him. did Did he, Paul did say there's three kingdoms? He, he spoke of the three kingdoms of heaven in, uh, Corinthians 15, 40. And one of them's on, one of them's on the telly? Did Paul ever meet Jesus? Mm. Paul. No, it's just like Paul. I mean, maybe, there's probably someone who can explain it, but I'm just going to do the short version. I think Paul there. used to be Saul. Is that true? Yeah, and then they changed it. He was hiding his Judaism. Yeah, some really bad handwriting back then. So, <laughs> uh, so Ben is out, right? Mm. Mental institution. The next oldest son is Joel. And uh, after Ben leaves, Joel finally feels confident to tell his brother Wesley that, uh, you know, Dad actually gave me the mantle. Oh, is that true? Well, when Wesley hears this, he starts sweating because... Um, he was given the mantle too. Yeah. Oh yeah. God! He he tapped it. He he his ball slapped it on my ass in Morse code. I was gonna say it was a tea bag. <laughs> and Wesley had already been telling everybody for like for years that uh, Dyer had given him the mantle. In fact, he'd already started building spaceships to prepare for the coming millennium. He was building true? spaceships. Yeah. Oh God, God. Do you have any schematics or? I don't know if he did. descriptions. Mm. Mentally, it was mentally. A, oh, in his head. It was celestial. A spaceship it was by a tele- guy who telepathic, had, tele- telepathic telestial spaceship. I mean, we're talking like 1960 now, so it's a guy who... Had oh, the um, alloys were out of control. Yeah, he's basically the Alfred Lawson of spaceship building. Yeah, mm-hmm. he had the tinfoil. Yeah. He was holding like this, like Roswell. Mm-hmm. Just spaceship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We'll just shrink right down. We'll climb in this... Floor. So maybe he crashed at Roswell for all we know. You know? Hey. Or they were trying to come and... and but um, they're all trying to come. Though, so uh, you know, despite this, Wesley doesn't. He doesn't make a big stink out of it. No big deal. And uh, Joel goes to Utah, where he incorporates his new church uh, called the Church of the Firstborn of the Fullness of Times. And these people are still allowing these people to come in after they chase them out of town. So, so the, you know, their 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 father was um, royalty adjacent. N- well, excommun. The family was excommunicated. I believe. From I the Catholic. official Mormon church. Right. But it doesn't mean that they, when they get older, can't, you know, maybe they go sure. back and say, hey, like, my dad, you know, but what me. About the whole forgiveness thing? Mm. Maybe they don't tell them when they're getting their church incorporated that they are. Maybe, they, you know, they soft pedal to, we're going to space. <laughs> it doesn't say it like that. Yeah. You're going to suck the astronaut <laughs> dick. <laughs> And uh, while they were, while they were, uh, like they, they build a church out in the middle of nowhere, and they maybe just neglect to tell people that we're not an officially sanctioned body of the well, Church I mean, of Mormon. No, no, no. There's, no, the people who join believe they are the one true church. You don't have to tell them you're, whether you're sanctioned or not. So are they peeling off people from legit LDS? Sometimes, uh, sometimes they're just peeling off people who are in the area, or family members, or people who were in. You know, they would get people who maybe were in another family member's mm. church, uh, but they would go around trying to grow their church. There's a man after uh, after Irvel, never good when there's suddenly a man. Ervil Ir- and, and Alma, when they left Ben's church, they joined uh, the church of this man named Rulon Allred. Oh, mm. good name. Yeah, and uh, b- but oh, when Marvel Comics, when Joel goes to Utah and he incorporates his church. He is, uh, God reaches out to him, mm. helpful man, mm. and tells him that, uh, he gives him a message, and he says, actually, you are 
the one true and powerful you are mighty the, guy. Stop. You are the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one else is above you. Stop. No, Matt, uh, I'm sorry uh, for for uh, just the sake of. Mm-hmm. At, at this point, we're we're still 50s, 60s. We're we're in the early 60s. Here. So they early, have, early to mid 60s. They have had to uh, abandon uh, polygamy in the mainstream. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. Quite, so, it, like, maybe, it, it is far out of it's. See, the thing is, it's not a doctrine. Now you could practice it, and maybe if you're in the right community, mm-hmm. they won't. You know, make a stink. But if you're in the wrong community, they might drive you out of town. All right. Yeah. So LDS, I think, well, what was it, maybe 20s, 30s or something, had to. I believe it was 1923. Yeah. Maybe. And so they, uh, but they also said uh, one day, I think, uh, it will be brought back before, uh, you know, salvation or whatever. Right. Uh, or, uh, or, you know, revelation. Harris. What do you mean? So uh, why is that important? Because, because it holds out the promise uh, of tradition. For for people that that don't want to give it up, yeah, but it's just such like it's so. Uh, who, there's a million other things about religion that are more important than than ten girls versus one. Aaron, <sighs> no, there's not. What do not. you pray to at <laughs> night? <laughs> All right, you're making a good point. <laughs> <laughs> don't you ever think I want to see two guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's, uh, no, that doesn't make sense. Uh, no, no, wait, sense. wait, no, no, no. Ah, I don't no. Want... Well, Steve's ten dads. I think that's a pretty good. Suit. I mean, which porno do you want to watch? You want to watch thirty girls on one guy? Or you want to watch thirty guys on one girl? Hmm. Hmm. Now maybe we should reverse it. Now mm. this porno is legal. No. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is not. <laughs> Under LDS principles, this porno is Por- legal. Legal porno. Oh, boy. Uh, but so, but they're still kind of rolling with it, and they're maybe on the fringes of town. So anybody they're peeling off from LDS, they're sort of bringing into a polygamous church. Yeah, and it doesn't mean those people are uh, polygamous. Um, but it's going down. But they, if they're not careful, they could. are they masquerading as LDS? Well, well, I mean, I guess I, guess I don't, I don't know exactly if if they consider themselves Latter Day Saints. They are. Current saint. They Saturday are the church, church of the fullness of the times, right? The church of the first burn of the fullness uh-huh. of the times. Uh, it, I, I don't know how that fits into Latter Day Saints. Yeah, but, but their belief is that they are living the true Mormon gospel. Mm. I wonder. Uh, yeah, that's a weird thing to you because you know uh, there's a the thing with uh, the Catholic Church and then mm-hmm. Protestantism, and then Protestantism never stops splitting. Yeah, it's fraction after fraction after fraction after fraction, and people go like, "Mary's not a virgin here, but she is over here," right, and, and right. bikiti bikiti bam, and we believe all this other shit. But in LDS, uh, especially because they were kind of persecuted, right? You would think that there wouldn't be as many offshoots and and, uh, and breakaways, well, or or, you, or, or, or there, there might be more because persecution because a, persecution is a sign of virtue that, that you you are the as good as Joseph Smith. Yeah, virtuous mm-hmm. victimhood. Yeah. Okay. All right. I like it, fellas. Good All work. All right. Good talk. Good work. So, uh, so Rulon Alred was uh, was the leader of a couple of the brothers, and Joel in, in this um, in the when God reaches out to him, he tells Joel that, oh, by the way, Rulon Rulon is actually uh, your servant. Mm. So Joel has to go back and. You know, hey, him. like, hey, Ron, you know, like, I know, I know you think you've been talking to God, but like, mm-hmm. I just talked to God. And uh, this me. is, yeah, I know sometimes he, like, you know, he says things to some of us that, but you know, he likes to big everybody up. So, you like, need to tidy this up. You, but you need to get on your fucking knees right now, <laughs> dog. Now, I don't think, I don't, I don't believe. <laughs> Rulon goes along, but <laughs> Joel says the family has to. They're also moving back to Colonial LeBaron, and oh, uh, and he, can, he, can, <laughs> he convinces his younger brother Ervil to join. Uh, apparently, quote after long dis- after long discussions about scripture and theological fine points, oh. uh, which just sounds like like the test is like who knows more stuff. Yeah, about a fucking religion they made up. Wasn't Jesus in, like, fucking New Orleans the whole time? Yeah, but, you know, like, <laughs> they didn't make it up. The yeah. fucking- That's the Bon Tom's Roulette. <laughs> you in the swamp now. <laughs> uh, eventually, their, their mother also joins, uh, which is a first for the kids. And, um, well, because she hadn't joined in, like, you know, Ben's church. Yeah, 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 because he was screaming the whole time. Yeah, I mean, you know. Ah! Everybody get the fuck up. Lion face. Ah, lemon ah. face. Mm. 
<laughs> and uh, and and uh, Joe Joe gives uh, everybody in the family a job and a title. Hey, so you know they have servant. they have some uh, cool. some various levels of hierarchy. Uh, and and he, then he spends a lot of his time growing his church, and he does grow the church, and he spends a lot of time um, out of town, going to other places uh, where Mormons are, and Talking and, and trying to convince them to join his church. Mm. Because really, like you know, the more people who join, the more tithing you can get. The more, oh, yeah, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and he starts, you know, he he starts buying up land. Uh, with the help of his brother Ervil, he starts buying up land around Irvil's town. back in the fold, baby. I love it. And uh, and he dark, dark horse. He, Ervil's gonna be the fucking running shit in the celestial heavens. Ervil had some bench ads for real estate. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll get there. And uh, and uh, 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 he, he starts doing like construction projects. Um, you know, he's trying to build, you know, cities like little you know towns and 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 if they prosper, more people will show up. Sure, you know, because if they have they have they always have these visions of places where like when they have the vision, there's an abundance of fruit. A shiny right, yeah. right. city on the hill. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. they're fruit peddlers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but... Telesting but, each other and all that but, shit. But Joel, Joel's spent not spending enough time with the main colony, and, and over time, uh, Ervil starts wearing tailored suits. Uh-oh. Uh, he's eating better food during meals. Fruits. How dare he? Uh, it, it, during the day, instead of working the fields, uh, he's just reading scripture to the people who are working the fields. Earl's mm. uh, take it out. And you know, one of his one of his jobs was he would uh, he got to choose who worked where. You know, mm. so he was he oh, had. Oh, that's you, not good. You with the uh, a pendulous breast. You work yes. right here around my balls. <laughs> and uh, it, it his, his actions start getting noticed, and uh, yeah. the, uh huh. There's a there's a there was a man named Noel Pratt who was he was one of the first converts uh, to to this uh, church, uh, but in it, as early as 1959 he was so disgusted with what he saw Irville doing he started a newsletter, where uh, disgusted by the tailored suits and fine fine cuisines. Well, he wrote. The root of the whole problem is Ervil. We do not belong to Joel's church. We belong to Ervil's church. Ervil today collects parts of the tithing before the bishop ever sees it. He insists on supporting, on being supported so that he can dedicate himself to the proselytizing work. The inner motivation is his hunger for the power which he loves to talk about. Ervil. Mm. Mm. Oh, that ain't for you, sweetheart. And Ervil uh, uh, also, uh, along with deciding who works where, he also... Uh, was uh, allowed to decide uh, which girls and women would marry and to whom. Of course. Uh huh. And um, often you got to go through a test first. Uh -huh. Well, not even. Often he. It turns out he decided that uh, they would marry him. All of them. All you guys. Yeah. Um. It, in the 1950s, he had married two women. Um. By the end of the 1960s, he had married ten. More, nice. Ten more. Free love, uh, dude. Uh, Summer love. Including uh, 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 one woman who's already married. Nice. Uh, a fourteen-year-old. No. Uh, eventually, a pair of sisters who were fourteen years apart. Uh, one would be like his third or fourth wife. One would be his uh, last wife. Mm. Uh -huh. um, some would eventually flee when they had the chance. Others would stay loyal the rest of their lives. All would bear him children, and uh, good God. Uh, seven would bear him soldiers. To uh, uh -huh. foreshadow a little bit, um, so there becomes soldiers. A, it becomes an issue with the one who's who's already married, and so they make a rule in the church that you have to wait six months from divorce to marry someone. Oh yeah, because this guy's going around. He's just going, he's time. just going around going, hey, yeah, he's and pick, and the, picking the fruits and and the guy like maybe the guy who's married to that woman is out of town and he comes back and he's like, oh, you're you're no, married fuck. to the guy who's way above me in the church, yeah, fuck. and yeah. Now, uh, in 1965... Cut again. How the fuck much is Joel spending time here? Like, what's going on, bro? Well, Joel, they, everybody in the book describes... He was getting that good out of town. No, everybody in the book describes Joel as like... What well, his teacher described him as kind of slow. Mm -hmm. uh, but everybody described him as like the sweetest, nicest man Aww. who never believed in any Herbal? badness. Herbal? Nobody the, would want to fuck He's the best my... of us. Uh, and 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 also believed that if harm would ever come to him, uh, it's part of God's choice, and also you know 
if he dies, he's going to he's going to celestial heaven. I mean, I'm going straight there. So, man. so what is he? He's, it's not his job to stop people from yeah from making God's choice. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Rulon Rouge or whatever mm-hmm. your name is. Take me out. You gotta blow me first, buddy. Because you're my servant. If you're going to blow me away. And if you're blowing me, you might as well stay on your knees because Ervil's up next. <laughs> then it's Inspector Deck. <laughs> you, God. Me, Ghostface Killer. Me, God. The whole clan, man. <laughs> Wu-Tang Clan coming. You're going to have to suck the inspectors there, man. <laughs> we got somebody wearing a mask of ODB. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a magazine printout stapled to some guy's face. <laughs> staple, 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 staple. <laughs> it's Urville again. That's <laughs> <laughs> how he gets back in line. So in 1965, Urville starts making, he starts getting more specific uh, uh, thoughts from God, and mm. uh, he starts making the uh, fiery, blood-soaked sermons talking about Anybody not adhering to God's law was an enemy. Um, and, and eventually he, he tells uh, one, of the, one of the guys in, in, in the church that Joel was the reason for all the issues in the church. And the guy's like, what do you, what do you mean? And Ervil says to him, he says, he's got to straighten up. He's got to straighten up or he's going to go down. Oh, Joel the sweetie? And around this point, uh, Ervil stops sleeping and he starts, huh? he starts just writing and sermonizing just for days until he passes out. Good just idea. nonstop. He would go into these hi- hypnotic trances, which I really just think was just him falling asleep on his feet, but, you know. Or mania, or... Uh, I mean, they had, they, they had some good shit out there. You could probably get some uh, drugs. Could you get? Anything, uh, anything you want, just not coffee. <laughs> uh, well, you know, they used to... You know, remember um, ephedra? Mm-hmm. You remember ephedra was like... Um, it's an herb, and uh, it's using the the, the creation of uh, pseudofed. Uh, uh, well, pseudofedrin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it it was a very popular like diet aid, all this stuff. You used to be able to buy it over the counter, mm-hmm. but then like some baseball players died because like they had well, they were on steroids and yeah. and they were taking ephedra. But you it, you could buy it at gas stations and shit. But ephedra used to be called Mormon tea, and it was it was low key methy. I mean, it's not it, it's not methamphetamine, but it was a stimulant. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was a caffeine like mm-hmm. herb, mm-hmm. Uh, or or it was an herb that had caffeine like stimulant effects, and mm-hmm. they used to call it Mormon tea because technically it wasn't tea or coffee, and so they could they could drink it. <laughs> oh, yeah. interesting. But also, uh, that shit, <laughs> dude, a federal rock. I'm not. Uh, uh, just to say real quick because this this was going this way. Uh, I wanted to have this quick talk right before the break, um, but the amount of people. That you had already said before this this shit went here mm-hmm. uh, ended up in mental institutions, um, like you said. I think it was uh, the confusion. Um, it was uh, people not knowing how to deal with people that really believed that God was always talking to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think a lot of people maybe went to mental institutions and were just brought up with like too much hoopla hysteria in the house, or you know. Right, how how sick were they, and how much were they true believers? Is and, yeah, well, and, 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 and also, yeah, you can go crazy by being around crazy people too long. And how many of them were uh, went to school? Right, you're you're just home all day with the prophecy. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, yeah, you can, and you're excommunicated, so you, there's nobody else to like filter it right. out with. Mm-hmm. You can make if you don't have a predisposition to craziness. You can make somebody you try. You can drive somebody mad, right? yeah. and definitely and like if that's what's if, uh, if uh, doubt is dissuaded, uh, then that's going to create a really bad atmosphere. Yeah, because then you just have to believe in more and more. Right. It has to go on and on. Yeah. You know. But anyway, Matt, back to it. So this is a uh, Harold Tippett, uh, who was part of it. He said, "This is about uh, Irville's uh, trances." You could be talking to him, and he'd just go into these trances. He'd look straight at you and just stare and stare. You could tell he wasn't really seeing anything, and you just wouldn't know who you were talking to. I think his subconscious mind was aware of what was going on around him, but his vision would just go into the block. And he would stay like that for a minute or so. Then he'd snap out of it and carry on the conversation like nothing happened. Hmm. Which uh, sounds uh, freaky. Um, that sounds, yeah, yeah schizo yeah, Sounds vaguely religious. <laughs> Schizoaffective. Sure. Uh, and... Uh, so, Ervil, uh, he, psychosomatic at insane. But while he's making all these these, these sermons and 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 doing these these day long you know preaching and, and writing sessions, he does gain 
uh, some adherents among the church. And one of them is this guy named Daniel Ben Jordan, who, um, uh, who, who Ir one of Irville's wives said uh, that's his real wife because they spent so much time together. <laughs> yeah. I know that game. Yeah, there are a couple of fruit peddlers, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but he would become a very important uh, right hand man to Irville. And um, Daniel Ben Jordan. And spit on it, use your left. Now, and, and so, so this this goes on for you know four or five years until eventually uh, Joel gets he, the people in the church go to Joel and they they like Joel like. We're not kidding anymore. You, he is dangerous, and he's saying things about harming you. He can't be here anymore. Not my Irvel. He's one of the sweetest boys around. He's like the Tito of our group. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him over there in his tailored suits. <laughs> Eating all the finest apricots. <laughs> Look at that little bu butt flap he's got there. <laughs> so you can, you know... Put all kinds of beads up there and stuff. He, he loves, loves that. He loves it. He loves chess. <laughs> <laughs> so this oh. guy's a whiz at it. So Joel has a meeting with him where he um, he doesn't kick him out of the church, but he takes away his uh, his title and his power. <gasps> so he loses his job. He mm. loses the official email address. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he so he's not making. He's not. He doesn't get any money from the church anymore. Uh -uh. And then he discovers. And why be in the church? Well, he and he, well. He, after that, he discovers when he tries to marry this woman who is married, that he had to wait six months. He even discovers oh. that he can't even hop ahead of that line anymore. I mean, what the, what the, fuck, what fuck, the fuck, dude? What am I even doing this for? Yeah. What is this shit? Yeah. I got a big top hat. I got these fancy frilly. <laughs> I'm eating fucking shawarma head. on a fucking skewer. And I can't fuck over his wife I want? I, I gotta wait? I can't get a baker's dozen of wives? Uh, uh, I think uh, I what, might... What country am I in? Yeah, I think I might be <laughs> oppressed. I think, <laughs> I think I need to go to the ACLU. Yeah. They don't have Jews in there, do they? <laughs> uh, so Ir Irvel, uh, so he, he tries to go out on his own and to make some money. And, yeah! Uh, uh, he, and he, he struggles making money. He's... He, uh, when when the land deals were made with Joel, when they bought that land, Irvel actually uh, put his name on most of it. So he was able to sell some of that land from under his brother. But he still needs more money. He uh, convinces his mom to sell her farm, which he takes the money for. Jesus. Um, and it's, like, it's just a quick turnaround. Molly, you'll get it back in like two days. <laughs> yeah. It's just paperwork. It's just paperwork. <laughs> It's just a simple swap hmm. in and out. It's, just, it's, 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 it's a it's collateral a, situation. It's, it's an Eiffel Tower scheme. <laughs> we get two wives. We tell another guy he gets two wives. It's simple. It's simple. The money comes right back. I'm on one end. <laughs> Joel's on the other end. We high We're five. high five. <laughs> We're high fiving. We can't stop he high fiving. He gets mouth. I get whatever holds on the other side. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And, you know, I think about him as my real wife. Mm -hmm. uh, Is it, that uh, weird? And Irvel starts spreading rumors that Joel actually isn't the, the number one guy, and so he didn't actually have the power to dismiss him. Joel, it's not mine. And <laughs> number one guy. And, uh, and Irvel, you know, so he keeps gaining, like, a person here, a person there. And uh, going to seem like such a shyster to everyone, especially after the land deals. Well, they don't know about the land deals. Well, do they know they can't go over there no more? Well, no, but it's like the, no one was. It was just they were buying a lot of land. It's not too like big. this. Yeah, too big. Yeah, there, there. There's not a lot of people involved here. You're right. You're right. I'd but say less than a hundred. TT and Dan, uh, and um, and eventually, <laughs> there's these rumors going around, and someone talking. And Irvel is telling multiple people that he is going to do something, and eventually, someone finds like a, a list, a murder list. With Joel's name on it. Oh. And they tell somebody who tells Joel, one of his Joel's wives is like, hey, so like, you're on the murder list. You know us wives have been talking. <laughs> yeah, as we do. And and she tells Joel, and Joel says, he says, um Women be talking. He says, Oh, oh well. I, I guess I guess I get murdered then. And he says to his wife, he says, Well, I will be killed. Oh my God. And uh a month after his 49th birthday, 1972. Joel Baron is uh, he's traveling from uh, like one one follower's house to another, and uh, and and a couple of them uh, they say, hey, uh, can you uh, help me t uh, like uh, tow my my car from uh, from my house? Hey, can you help me kill you real quick? And he says, sure, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I guess <laughs> pretty much. He says, sure. It's this vacant house, and uh, 
and and his son's in the car and um no and his wife's in the car and 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 uh, the guy Joel hooks up the cab and like to, to tow the car and then uh, the next thing the son's watching this and he sees his dad and this guy then go into the vacant house and the next thing he sees is window being smashed and his dad being beaten with a chair and then he sees Daniel Ben Jordan walk past the car into the house uh, and he hears two gunshots and then he sees Daniel Ben Jordan walk out of the house and that other guy hop out of a window and run Good idea. Uh, so he waits a minute or two, and he walks into the house, and he finds his father, uh, uh, Joel, uh, uh, shot twice in the head. And his wife, dead is, on the is, his wife is there, too. Yeah, and his wife is in the car, and uh, Daniel ben Jordan, and this other guy, they flee off in a, another car that was waiting nearby. Hmm. Meanwhile, there's a church across the street who was having, they were having, like, a sermon or something, and people were standing going, A good old-fashioned thing. Yeah. Something going on over there? Seriously? And Daniel ben Jordan walks up, he's like, everything. No, it's fine. Just no, a, no, just no, a, just no, a simple no, blood no, atonement. No. Yeah. Nothing, nothing that the <laughs> good Lord didn't call Let's, Hey, what are you ladies wearing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, aside from the underwear. So uh, um, a reward is then put out for information on seven men, Irville being one of them, uh, Daniel Ben Jordan, uh, one of the other ones. And Because and, everybody in Joel's church is going, we know exactly who did this. Uh, Irville, he, he surrenders uh, to uh, the police and in 1973, he sentenced to 12 years in prison. And then the next day, a higher court overturns his verdict, and he is released. Fuck off! What, what the fucking Hebrew National Court? What's going on? They answer to a higher authority, John. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so, uh... What? What? What happened? So, what? so, so uh, Scott Anderson, uh, he, he, he said there's... There's, like, various rumors, but he really believes it's as simple as uh, the idea of Mordida. Which is a bribe. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it was anything highfalutin. A, a, a follower of Irville's claimed to have raised $5,000 for his release. Mm. And uh, maybe that was enough. That'll do, do it. it. Uh, back then. Hey, and Ir so Irville is up to some with his, shit. With his tailored suit and, and Turkish his, delight. And that was his brother, remember. Oh, God damn, that's rough. He had those guys kill his brother, huh? Yeah. Couldn't do it himself. Fucking bitch. And uh, Irvil, back out, and he starts growing his church, which he calls Children of the Firstborn of the Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Yeah. And he even converts like a, a member or two. Uh, one of the guys uh, it, it, uh, in his group, or he had like, a couple sons of one of the guys who was in Joel's church, and that guy had gone to the sons to be like, yeah, you guys... You're in a terrible place. Irville's an evil man, and when he leaves the meeting, he's joined the church. They've convinced him. Hmm. So there's a, there's a lot of be. I don't I don't know what it, I think I don't know what that there's something about, um, you know, being in in, in this Gullibility. kind of ability. I know, but I, I think I think some of it's belonging. desperation and uh, oh, the, well, well, the desperation well, to belong. Well, yeah. but also, if you don't, are you next? You know what I'm saying? I don't think I don't I don't I don't necessarily think you think it's that so-called big dick energy, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? It's not all about how big the dick is. Yeah. D does not equal MC square. Yeah. It's how you play snake with it. Yeah, man. It's spooky action at a distance. BDE, <laughs> big dick curve. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, but mo most of Joel's uh, followers would would uh, join uh, the other brother Verland's. Church. Oh, the non-murderer. Yeah. So far. Uh, and they would move to a place called Los Molinos in Baja, California. Sick, dude. That means the windmills, fool. And, oh. uh, and Irvin would start preaching on his own, and, and what he would do is he, uh, by now he, he had, uh, he had uh, multiple daughters who were in their, their mid-teens, oh. and so he so would marry them off to, to gain followers and to, because when you, when you, no, I understand. You're how it built, works. He's yeah, building. We, we watch Game of Thrones, dude. We get it. Yes. Okay. Okay. But it, it's you know it's it's not it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a stronger connection than a follower, right? Uh, you have people who are betrothed family. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. Right. Um, Come. and cum is thicker than blood, which oh is thicker than water. Oh my god! What? It is. I guess. Try it. <laughs> Nut is thicker than water. I mean, and I, mean, I just I want to read this a little bit just to kind of emphasize. Um, this is from Anderson again. Uh, 
There was the weapon that, when it came to cult leaders, was uniquely Ervil's, one that Charles Manson tried to fashion but never really had. Unlike Manson's family, Ervil's family was for real. Among those he dispatched to kill were his own flesh and blood sons. The young girls he gave over con- con- uh, uh, consolidated the support of his henchmen were his own flesh and blood daughters. The family tie gave Ervil's commands a far greater power than Manson could ever hope to achieve. Jesus Christ. So now he's going after his boys? No, he's using he's his. Using he's his, using his kids. The soldiers. To, to get who? Wait, wait and see. Name somebody, you know? Uh, now, no, no, which is, uh, we should also note that um, many or most of Ervil's wives did not uh, enjoy the experience. What, oh. uh, fucking him? Oh, Moida? Well, especially a fucking him. Um, Big Dick Ervil? Someone I heard. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> he had uh, mul- multiple uh, wives uh, took their kids and, and ran off. Um, he had um, it's too big. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're, moving, we're moving to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> it's too Boku. <laughs> it's too Boku. No soul herbal. <laughs> Maybe even Cambodia. <laughs> and we holidayed there once. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, two would eventually. Um, well, I'll get to that. Uh, but three of them would run away. Uh, uh, two would spend long periods in mental institutions. Mm. Uh, three others would end up in prison. Good dick make you go crazy. Um, <laughs> you know. No, it was. It was not. We'll get to the the dick. It oh. was. It was not. It was hey, not good. We better. We, did, it was we not better. Good. I, 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 With a name I, I, like Ervil, it better fucking have like a gnarl in it, like a willow. Bar. Look at that horns. Oh, a knot. <laughs> it's got a knot, like a wood knot, and a thumbnail. <laughs> Ew, I don't know. No. There was uh, there was one. I, I I I can't find the the exact passage, but she said uh, the the day uh, after they were the day they were married. Uh, uh, she had, uh, he basically, he was terrible in bed and she hated having sex with him because his breath stank. Uh, and, uh, he, he would just pump and fall over and immediately fall asleep. Uh, oh my God. It, yeah. Didn't say anything how about big it was, so. Uh, yeah, it didn't seem like everybody, uh, it never came up. Aaron's never going to stop sticking up for Ervil the murderer's dick being huge. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I like it. I like you stake out a claim. And you go like, well, <laughs> hey, unless I hear otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His breath stank, but she's dick. He's, he's breathing so hard from carrying around that all. <laughs> <It's> even <laughs> most of the blood's in his. <laughs> Past the mental. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, his <laughs> his 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 thirteenth and final wife, uh, Rena Chenoweth. Uh, she, um, yeah, she was, uh, 14. Ugh. Uh, no, sorry, she was 16, but he had oh. been, he had, he had been, uh, mole- <laughs> he had been molesting her. He had been molesting her? Oh, no, 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 for, no. Four, for four years. Wait, 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 She was the daughter of one of his followers. Yeah. And he was already married to her sister. And so, uh, he was already. So one of his followers, uh, had a, had a, had one daughter and... who he married when she was like, 16 or 17. The ripe old age. And then when the other da- 14 years later, when the other daughter was old enough, he married her. Jesus uh, this is a- Why? Just fuck her. Oh, God. What? Like, talk- the whole marriage thing. Like, listen, I'm not saying fuck 14-year-olds. No. What I'm saying yeah, is yeah. Like, I was like, Aaron, you need to really recalibrate this it, message. Yeah, I'm not saying, like... This message is brought to you by Aaron Pita. <laughs> 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 why marry him when you can just fuck him? Well, because... You couldn't fuck him until you were married. Oh, because you know it's right. Yeah, you're right. Rules. Yeah, no, this is, this is, it's not Vietnam. There are rules. Uh, it's she, so stupid. She would write in her uh, memoir. She would write, uh, "Wasn't all what I expected it to be, and it certainly wasn't very exciting or memorable." <sighs> of course, I had no one else to compare him to in bed, but I was aware of what I was feeling, and it wasn't much. Oh uh, God! He just shat on by the fourteen-year-old. Sixteen. Now, yeah. When it was over, he rolled off me and began snoring almost immediately. Many times we made love after that. I had to close my eyes, pretend I was somewhere else, or he was someone else. I would oh often God. turn my head away or hold my breath so I wouldn't have to smell his breath. Oh. 
Oh, uh, mm. I, it always reeked of something awful, usually coffee. He kissed like a fish, very stiff lip. Coffee's I, Mormon. Now, now I call foul. Oh, yeah, I yeah, mean, start, start there. I mean, we haven't even. This He's drinking coffee, some Mormon. Huh. He kissed like a fish, very stiff lipped, in a way that really disgusted me. He wasn't adventurous most of the time. He didn't even seem to have his mind on what he was doing. He never once asked how it was or gave me any kind of instructions. He would just say something like, relax. But that was very hard for me to do. Yeah. Chill out. <laughs> yeah. It's me, Orville. Yeah. Hey, you know me. On the uh, ones and twos. Mac Daddy but he, but, uh, one. As, as Anderson uh, notes on the, the page before, um, uh, he was 6'4", square jaw, uh, powerfully built. She you know, loved so it. Like, you, she you know, loved it. For people who don't know any better, it seems like, wow, that's a... Strapping lad. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's and tall, also, also than most of us. frightening. Yeah, yeah, intimidating. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. when he won't shut the fuck up for a whole day. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, You're like, I'll join yeah. you, just shut the fuck up. And then someone even mentions in the book, they're like, I think a lot of people just joined him so he just stopped talking. Ugh. And yeah. back then, they were around there, there's probably not that many people to join. Yeah, so, he just wore them down. Yes, I, I, I think that was a large part of his uh, uh, thing. And, um... Ugh. So, uh, uh... Oh, you loved him a minute ago. Shut up. Well, with the breath and the tiny dick and the... Really took the wind out of your sails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when just, he was murdering well, his brother with here, a big the thi- dick. The thing is that, like, that account that she gives, how many women throughout history have had that? Yeah. That's what's so depressing. I know. Yeah. And listen, I'm not a feminist, you know? <laughs> I'm not a male feminist. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you're starting, but <laughs> but like, but yeah, go there. Hearing that account, she is one of millions of women yeah, yeah, through yeah, the great arc of history. Good. Yeah, who have had that Some be guy, their reality. Yeah, so well, that, I, mean, I have to hold my breath and turn my head and just put up with it because I had no fucking say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and he he has all this power, and he's just like and he's not even laying good pipe. Well, that's because the the power has he doesn't the power, care. The he pipe doesn't, is the know. power. The yeah. power is the pipe. But the power, it has, it's, yeah, it, it's no, not that's just what, power. That, uh, no, it's not just power. But you know, what's his incentive? Like, obviously, he's not a thoughtful man like right. we are. No, no, no. But, but but he's you know he for him there's no reason to try. He's gonna have sex with them anytime he wants. Yeah, yeah, but. That will, that's see. I'm that's not saying not it's much. good reasoning. I'm yeah. just saying. I'm no, guessing no, no. that's part I'm, of his reason. It, ju- it was just that hearing her account it's, it's, it, and it's realizing that it's not unique. Right. It's quite yeah. the opposite of unique. Just makes it. Yeah. You know. You know. You can probably have like uh. You know. It, it, the equivalent in the day of like a like a flashlight with like a candle or something. Or like a. Just do that and leave the poor lady out of. If, you, if somebody gets talked about being like rolled off. They just yeah. rolled off me, and like, they didn't care if I came. Like, you know, came, felt anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah came, yeah. even yeah, enjoyed. Came, like, like, it's uh, breath, his breath stinking. Coffee and anyway, fish. we won't get it caught up on uh, uh, sexual acumen. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, keep... we still, we still, have, we still have uh, some work to do here. Uh, uh, now, so Irvel, now he's he, he's out, but he 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 constantly fears reprisal from the other church that has never threatened him. Uh, it's a it's a large projection game for him at this point. Oh, his, his brother Joel's yeah. sweet church. Well, yeah. now Verland's church. Oh yes, yes. Uh, so he fears that they would do what he would do, which is uh, oh, murder. Are they, are they like across the street from each other? Is it they're like... they're not that far away, but they're they're in the, the similar you know area in just Mexico. Competing churches in yeah. Mexico. And uh, what do the Mexicans think? No, aren't they in Utah now? No, 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 no. Oh, they're, they're still in Mexico. Yeah, still okay. Mexico. I, yeah. Uh, and and that would, that's in, in, it would become important later when they when they aren't. Uh, so so he's going house to house. He's he's constantly on the run because he thinks that people are out to kill him, even though they've never acted like he has towards him. Uh, and while- it is such a prison of your own morality. Oh my god! Yeah. When you go like, I expect everyone to do what I would do. Yeah. That's the the Donald Trump prison. It's the whole I, I, fucking. Republican Everybody is just going like, like the most ruthless thing I expect. You're all right. groomers. Meanwhile, I'm grooming. Right. Yeah. Dude, it's dude, they. You know, every accusation is an admission. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so while he's doing all this hiding, he he uh, he finally gets down to one of his favorite pastimes, which is um, writing forever. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and he 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 writes one of uh, one of his great manifestos uh, called uh, "Hour of Crisis, Day of Vengeance," which he's. 
It was a good Die Hard movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, you think maybe they'd be flipped because the day is longer. Than, but, you know, logic is not really the strong suit. Uh, uh, Anderson has, uh, it seems like he's read most of these manifestos, and he has a description of, um, uh, this is a, this is a, this is a description. Throughout his life, Irville LeBaron seemed to operate on the premise that if he repeated something often enough, people would eventually come to believe and accept it. He also seemed convinced that this saturation technique, effective in holding the attention of audiences during his verbal assaults, could be carried over to his literary ones. The fact is, all the themes and ideas of Irville's massive library of writings, numbering thousands of pages over the years, can be reduced to a few paragraphs. <sighs> the tone varies, the threats becoming more explicit and specific over time, but the underpinning of it all that the author is the Lord's prophet and that he is thoroughly peeved by the failures of others to recognize him as such is repeated a thousand times in a thousand different ways. Read in small doses, read in small doses, a paragraph or two, Ervil's writings seem the work of a lucid, intelligent mind. Taken in total, they are the portrait of a man erratically weaving along the frontier of madness, given to alternate bursts of inspiration and incoherence, pulled by the dueling manias of self-grandeur and paranoia. Yeah. This is fucking crazy. But it is really a, an entirely astute... Uh, Takedown of uh, mind changing. Yeah, I mean, uh, you well, can say well, the same thing about like Ted uh, Ted Kaczynski's writings, right? You, you could say it about yeah. uh, you could say it about advertising. Yeah, <laughs> they <laughs> sure. just they just wear you down. Yeah, yeah, and you just yeah. go like, or you know, not to if you tell a lie so big that it, it, no one uh, would ever believe yeah, it. Yeah. Even uh, fucking uh, Napoleon, goddamn, was uh, thinking dynamite. Think you grow rich. That whole shit, where it's just like you go like it's like if you believe. That you can do the shit. And like, what does it have to do with Napoleon? Wasn't his name Napoleon something? The guy that wrote Think and Grow Rich? Oh, I don't know. It was, you know, early, yeah, uh, yeah. like, 20s, you, you know, uh, one of the first... Yeah. Think power of positive thinking shit. Yeah, power of mm -hmm. positive thinking. And, uh, but it was just like, he was thrown out first, first of all, uh, uh, all caps. And then uh, the modern equivalent of that is uh, the guy that throws in cursing. MF Doom, all caps. <laughs> That they had the documentary on. The, the, cursing? Yeah. Oh. He was throwing fuck all the time just to wake people up and like oh. make people ta pay uh, attention. Uh, not, not Tony Robbins. Yeah, Tony Robbins, yeah. He was doing the all caps equivalent of that with speech yeah. Yeah. by just throwing in fuck and just saying like, see, if you can do that, you don't need to fucking, and like, it just keeps people like on their feet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in speech and in, uh, you know, fucking in text, yeah. they just do this thing where they fucking yell at you yeah. Ah! And, they're, and yeah. they're saying the next thing, but like you, 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 you definitely can distill that book down to yeah. just believe in yourself, like yeah. it, which is like uh, like a one page prayer, right. right? You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it's just it, it's a huge, but it's like a self hypnosis thing, and like you, you know, there's this weird thing about human psychology where that like you know, one page isn't enough to get it through your thick fucking skull. Well, it isn't enough for the writer to and describe so, it And well. sometimes, you know, w there's a weird thing about us is that we reward madness. Well, yeah, because usually it means there's numbers. Uh, or, or just like you want it bad, you really want something bad enough that you're crazy enough to do it, we reward you for it. Like, you yeah, shouldn't want of. to be president. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but and the people that want it get it, and like, you shouldn't want it. But also right. people that are just like, you know, we're lucky that we, you know, have a society where we go like, oh, well, this person doesn't... We live in a society. <laughs> this person doesn't believe this at all, so you can listen to them, and then you can be like, okay, well, I'll vault my opinions back and forth, and blah, blah, blah. But back then, you were just out in the middle of fucking nowhere with anybody. So right. mainly, it was still people just looking at... And it's one family. You you have to choose through... Who, who, two brothers in one family. Who, who's the strongest? And you go like, well, it well, turns the guy out. Did two hundred pushups. It turns out. <laughs> it turns out it might be this most ruthless guy with uh, the most willingness to kill people. Like, what? What? What is the difference of that? Of like anything? Like that's Genghis Khan all over again. You know yeah. what I mean? Like Genghis Khan let you practice whatever religion you wanted, though. <laughs> yeah, the religion of fucking him and giving him sons. Oh no! No, 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 no. no, no you're right. He did allow for freedom of religion, though. Sure. He did. Yeah. And protecting his seed. Go on, man. What's more important than seeds, dude? <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> I have I have a bunch of kids. Can we take a break? Matt, is that okay? Is yeah. Okay yeah, we'll be right so back. Pee and yeah, you want to dump some jerk. seed in the toilet, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. Not in the upper deck. 
Folks, we'll be right back. Uh, why not? <gasps> And we're back. <laughs> I met you guys tonight. <laughs> that was tonight, my friend. I met you. <laughs> Simpler times. Simpler times. Simpler. Back when we had to ask each other, when did we meet? Was, <laughs> was that? Was that, 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 that today? COVID? That's a night. Mm, never heard of it. <laughs> okay, so. Irville has uh, assumed everybody was going to kill him because of he because he, cause he wants ki- to kill cause, everybody because he killed his brother. Hmm. Uh, and he gets out of jail, and uh, so he uh, assumes everybody's going to kill him because he killed his brother. And he uh, starts hopping around between his uh, uh, his disciples' houses and uh, or numerous, probably his wives' houses too. Wives. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, I got a crush here. While he's doing it, he writes uh, "Hour of Crisis, Day of Vengeance," uh, which again, yeah, "Hour of Crisis, Day." I mean, I think it says something. Well, within that day of vengeance, there is one hour. I think it says something about him that he had one hour of crisis and it turned into a day of vengeance. Yeah. <laughs> and you wear the mask to protect the ones you love. <laughs> well, it is, it's, it's just a thing like Rambo. It's like they did one wrong, you know, park, right, park, right, yeah. park regulation. Yeah. And then he's like, it's uh, first movie. Yeah, he's going to be me. Uh, So, uh, so eat things to make a man puke. So, so, so Verlaine has his, uh, he has his crew, sissies. His, his church is, is largely located in, in Los Molinos. Mm. Um, and so, so Verla, er, er, Erville says, well, um, I think we know what we need to do. Shit. Uh, Verlan, he thinks he's the one true prophet. Is hey. it, yeah. It, the, there's been a few now. Right. Well, Irville believes he is. And the thing I, I don't quite understand is that, I, I mean, no, the thing, the, my, my belief is, is that Irville wants more people in his church. And he believes that if he kills Verlan, well, then no... he will get more. Pe- then people will come over to him. I'll have no other church to go to. Be- and 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 it's the. Does that seem like prophet type shit? P r o f i t. Yeah. If you if you're the only one preacher and sneakers. If you're the only one left, then who are, who are they going to follow? Right. It's yeah. all prophet. And I'm the first person who's ever made that connection. I know that was interesting. World. Yeah, that was really mm-hmm. good. And so on December 20th, so there's these rumors going around, and um, <laughs> Orville's, and someone goes to one of Orville's wives' house, oh, dude. and when she's when she goes to to you know goes to the supermarket, he starts like rummaging. The through supermarket? Stuff. Yeah, they got a supermarket out there. No, what? Well, no, I, I'm sorry. I believe so. One of his wives at the time is in San Diego, and this guy's visiting her in San Diego, and and she heads out to run errands, and he starts rifling through her house, and he finds. Murder list. The murder list. Hell yeah. Milk, eggs, Verlan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Verlan. <laughs> Other brothers. And so he reaches out to... Uh, this is crunk. not like his younger brother, like, too? Like- yeah, uh, oh, I, I think Irville might have been the youngest. Um, uh, and Joel was Joel was a guy that when your Irville was young, was him and Joel were, like, were the closest. Yeah, they're going to be buried next to each other. damn it. Yeah. Um, Killing your brothers, like oh, dude! Oh, he didn't yeah. kill him. So some guys did. God did. Yeah, all of it, really. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Well, he shouldn't have said that he was the one true. But what God said it. And and meanwhile, you know, as all this like the dad, there was no uh, yeah, no one no. was like, oh yeah, the dad gave it. I don't even know if there's anything in the book where it, like it says, Irville says, dad gave it to me. He just goes, no, I'm the one. You know, dude, it's just so it's a whole, uh, th- th- but there is a thing there, right? Where you go, like, uh, you know, I mean, he, he's he's a fucking phony, right? Yeah, and he's got to tell it like his litter of kids from from a, a million wives, yeah, which one of them is the next phony, and he just goes, I'm not gonna say it because I still want to keep 
you know. But I still have to be the phone. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. I still want to slap butthole in my balls all the live long day. And then all of these kids are, are, mean, are meanwhile going like, dude, I bet it's me. I bet it's me. I, you know, and this is well, well, well. They are, and they aren't. Uh, we, we, we will eventually get to that point, but we are not there yet. We get to the ball slapping conclusion. <laughs> no, not yet. Hmm. Uh, Next we, time on profiles, the ball slapping conclusion. Same ball slapping time, same ball slapping channel. <laughs> same ball slapping place, which is the back of your ass. Oh, I mean, what? what? Oh God! I guess I'll take this anal beads and KY jelly back down to the bat cave, sir. This <laughs> chess board and <laughs> I, can, I guess we'll have to figure out another way to send signals directly to your prostate, as which rook the knight should take. I guess, Master Wayne. Is, mm. And uh, Ur- Urval believes that by uh, uh, removing another fallen prophet, the, the the followers will come to their senses, and um, he chooses his next site for. Uh, this cleansing and it is um, a cleansing. It is Los Milenios, and so some the guy, the, the the person rummaging through the the woman's house uh, finds this info, and I, I believe they even find that it's, it's going to be it's at the Watergate Pueblo. For, so it's going to be for Lan, and oh, they have like a date and everything. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a murder plan. Yeah, it's a murder plan. Just it, it, do something, do it right. It's December twenty sixth. That's the that's the murder date. Oh, no, but Boxing Day? St. Stephen's Day, please. Yeah. My apologies. Uh, I don't know about fucking any of that Commonwealth bullshit. Let me see. Yeah, we'll get fucking I'm Catholic believe. and figure out St. Stephen's Day, you dumb fuck. St. Stephen's, what the fuck is It's just a day in Ireland after Christmas where everybody gets fully housed. Oh, yeah. is there, oh people in Ireland getting drunk? How original. Uh, no, 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 no. No, Aaron. Properly. It's a proper day. For what? We're getting fully housed, and uh, 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 so um, th- the th- there's there was well, a, 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 a nearby a nearby priest who who was who was told to, that tell Fuck the com- you. tell the community that something tell the community oh meow forget cerebro, <laughs> but he he doesn't get that 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 uh, notice until late uh, overland. No, no, this 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 this, this priest nearby or the, um <laughs> who's who's near near Los Milenios. He doesn't get the info. It, uh, until it's late in the day, and, and it's, it's supposed to be in another community that's not near, and he's like, okay, I'll deal with it tomorrow. It doesn't say exactly when they're going to be killed. It just says that there will be... Uh, but But uh, um, on December 26, 1974, the, the, the members of, of Irville's group who lived in Los Milenios, they... There's a guy in 1974 named Irville. Yeah. Wait, it was 74 by now? Yeah, it, this is yeah. the, the, the there. Are, we've been to the moon and back. I followed her. Over. There's Keep been a terrestrial it. heaven. Right, right. The spaceships. The, the, the guy, spaceships have come and went. Yeah, uh, Wes, Wesley. and these guys are in Mexico fighting each other over fucking parishioners. And meanwhile, they have no idea over the border celestial heaven is happening. You know, they're, they're, yeah. you know, you can. You, you got the Dukes of Hazard. You got right. you got the fucking General Lee. Taco Bell is fucking serving up outside the bun. <laughs> and the ceviche is as fresh yeah. as you've ever had, had it. it. Yeah. Uh, there's about 200 people in Los Milenios, and some of them were, were Irville's followers. Um, and um, a town of 200 people. Yeah, and and, and they uh, the Irville's followers, like the people who live there, they knew that okay, Irville's followers, like Ugh. we feel like. If they're up to no good, but they, yeah. they, they come in on December 26th. They come in and um, they don't cause any problems. They just come into town and they just start like, you know, they, they drive in and they, they just move some stuff out of their houses and uh, and then they leave without any incident. Hmm. You know, and like, a, like a, bunch, a bunch of them showed up and like moved stuff out of their houses and left without any incident. And so, you know, some of the people living there are going, OK, maybe they're actually getting out of here. Mm. Uh, That'd be nice. Yeah. And um, they're going on all those day after Christmas sales at Circuit City and shit. Yeah. So at five thirty, two car loads leave, um, which is half of the town. Oh, and so the the letter to that priest was 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 said uh, Colonial LeBaron was going to be attacked, uh, not Los Milenios. And so the, the guy who's near Los Milenios is like, okay, well, I'll tell him tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And that night, December twenty six, uh, a few of Ir- Ir- Irville's followers, a couple car loads of them, drive up to the hills above. Los Milenios, because it's kind of surrounded by a couple of 
of hills. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them uh, sneaks into town and lights fire to a building. A bunch of the town people uh, go to the well, start fighting the fire, and uh, they're actually doing a, a pretty good job of fighting the fire. And a couple of kids, they climb this tall building there that hasn't been finished to go, like, you know, to watch people Smart. fight this fire. Smart. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, as people are fighting this fire, from the hillside, and, and uh, one of the mothers had brought her, her kids uh, and put them on the hillside and said, what? hey, watch, you're going to see some fireworks. And the people on the hillside then started firing into the town and shooting at the people putting out the fire. What the fuck? And uh, eventually, like, the people in the town, they, they, they figure out what's happening. Irville. <laughs> and that, the cheer went up. And, and, and Verlan, he's in Nicaragua right now. What the fuck is he doing there? Well, he's he got him for fucking right-handed pitches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the cocaña. No, he left town yeah. He left town to do either some proselytizing or just yeah. raise some money or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Fucking chopping it up. Yeah. Chopping it up big time. He's never going to stop talking. And his yeah. his family. I got to keep up with my brother, man. This guy's writing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I got to have some up. I got to get the upper hand. I met you guys tonight, right? <laughs> and his wife, his wife's in town, who, who's in this Which town. Which one? I don't know, but one of his wives who's in town, she realized what's going on. She takes the kids, they run out of the house, they hide in the irrigation ditch. No one, uh, like, none of the Irville folks ever Nobody ever gets uh, chopped up. But the Irville folks, they fire and they're shooting people in town, and uh, they, hit, uh, they hit a 16-year-old kid, mm -mm. and they hit, they hit a couple people, and they just wounded a couple people, and then they, um, then they drive into the town and start firebombing houses. They start taking like Molotov cocktails and, and, and lighting the houses on fire. They, and these people, they don't drink. One, uh -huh. of, one of them finds the 16-year-old kid who's wounded, uh, shoots him in the chest with a shotgun, Jesus kills him. Jesus fucking Christ. Christ. Uh, because, you know, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, start, they start going through the houses, shooting into the houses. They kill a, another kid who had just woken up and was like, what's going on? He walks into his living room. They don't ask him. questions. Are these even... All definitely followers of Verlaine, or just like maybe, probably, probably. Okay. Do you yeah. think the Mexicans at this point would be like, "There goes the fucking neighborhood"? <laughs> I mean, some all of the, these some white of these, people. Come no, in. but some of these people are Mexican. Like even Ir Irville's four first four wives were Mexican. Mm. Yeah. Uh, then he was like, "I need to get some." You know. So uh, mix uh, it up. This is this is uh, mix it up. Uh, and and uh, they they go to the, like Verlan's. Uh, they try to they burn down uh, Verlan's house, but it, you know his family had already fled. Uh, but they're just sh kind of shooting anything that moves. A lot of people they play dead, and so they 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 uh, uh, survive. But there was a, you know, over I think over ten wounded and uh, two killed. Um, oh God, yeah. This uh, is a uh, Raul Raul Perez uh, who, who survived. He's this is what he said. He said. I remember everything from that night because I was a witness. I remember one woman was 78 years old. I remember when they shot her. I remember her because she was old and small. I remember how the mothers ran with their children for safety, carrying them in the dark. I remember when two boys were dead and how the mothers suffered. I remember everything from that night, but I don't want to remember anymore because our mothers, our wives, our daughters, our sons suffered too much. I don't want more suffering. No Jesus more. Jesus Christ. And... Uh, now, of course, Irville's not uh, there shooting the guns. No, 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 uh, it's no. just uh, some guys and uh, some ladies. It's on a golf course. Uh, two dozen ho ho homes have been firebombed, several completely gutted. Four women and 11 men, ranging from 16 to 78, had been shot. Um, uh, they were brought to... Uh, uh, two, two bleeding men brought the, the rest of the wounded to the hospital. Uh, they said uh, uh, one man, uh, Benjamin Zarate, shot in the head, manipulated the foot pedals and steered while Raymond Debaucher, uh, shot in the legs, worked the clutch. Hmm. It was a real... Uh, it was a team effort. A team effort. And so because of this, uh, the Mexican... The Mexican... Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, what Anderson calls legal machinery. Uh, finally, they started getting together, and in January 1975, uh, the residents of Los Melillas were invited to testify before a judge to bring criminal charges against the attackers. We don't have any badges. Elvis took them. <laughs> And and, and 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 what Raul Perez says during this whole thing, he said, "We were told not to shoot against them, and we never did. Nobody used their weapons in this town. We were told don't use weapons because God will put everything in order." So once Even like they were buying some bullshit. Like, but meanwhile, what year was that? This is 1974. 
These guys are going into town. Not a single person's shooting at them. And they're going around trying to kill everybody in the town. What are you looking up? Nothing. But. Porno. <laughs> yeah. I got some sweet, sweet pornos. Um, was this like more violent than anything that would be happening in Mexico at the time? Or was it just kind of more salacious because it was I a don't, bunch of crazy white people? I don't know. I Honestly, I do not know. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that this was more violent than the status quo. Well, especially a town being attacked like a military operation is just like, what the fuck? You know? Like what like what like what the fuck? Yeah, like you know, there weren't you know it's not like the cartels now. <laughs> like I, I my gut feeling is that this was like an aberration. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a lot of... Um... You know, the history of Mexico is introduce some white people mm-hmm. and, sh- and shit will pop off. Yeah. You know? Um, and I say this as a white. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot Don't of... Don't tell my girlfriend. Uh, no, yeah, she doesn't buy it. Or Rick Caruso. <laughs> yeah, who's Italian, yeah. so he's basically yeah. Latino. Dude, that was the, the thing fuck? that happened. At the, I know, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of things in... Um, well, we talked about it even in uh, Colonia Dignidad. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing of uh, look the other way. There's some white people doing some culty shit here. Shut the fuck up and and, and you'll get your money. Yes, yeah, so there is there is you know a history, you know, even within the United States. Yeah, and 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 like in Central and South America, there is still a cat like a, a a skin color caste system. Yeah, where you know the whites in Rio de Janeiro have a better station than the darker skinned people in the yeah. favelas. Like, yeah, yeah. And so... And they'll be still, like, very, very, uh, like, rude uh, slurs leveled against people that are darker. And- absolutely. There is, you know, it, it's... it's Skin color racism is not just a, a, a European thing. I mean, it certainly has the monopoly on it, but... Oh, like- no, for sure, but also, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, inter-South uh, American racism, we always say, is, is just, uh, you know, uh, the same and is as absurd as uh, inter-Scandinavia mm-hmm. uh, superiority or Asian, complexes. Or yeah. inter-Asian racism. Yeah. There's a... The, the residents are, are, uh, are, are asked to testify about what happened to them, and in their, their wisdom, the... Um, the the court that they're testifying in has them uh, uh, just they're all standing outside the court after they testify. Mm, and, smart. And as they're doing this, holding targets on their forehead. Uh, Raul Rios uh, approaches them, and um, uh, he's not the the brightest of the Irville followers, and. Uh, but he was a real bastard, apparently. Mm. Uh, and as he approaches them, he pulls out a shotgun. To this group of people, he, he points it at them, and just as he's about to fire it, he trips, and the first shot hits the ground, and then he regains his balance and he pulls the boat bolt back and uh, and he loads another shell while, while they're like screaming and running. And he raises the gun and he pulls the trigger, and this time nothing happens because the he didn't pull the bolt back far enough. Proceed. Uh, then in frustration, he takes the shotgun and he throws it to the ground. And he runs off, and as they chase after, he pulls out a gun and turns around and aims it to shoot at them. And as he does this, uh, he runs his arm into a telephone pole by accident, <laughs> and it knocks the gun from his hand. Oh, what not the good. fuck is going on? And he spent five months in prison, which seems like five months probably not enough to really. Sounds like a guy who might hang himself yeah, with his own bandages <laughs> <laughs> to kill a crowd of witnesses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Five months. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, 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 there's, there's, there's two little things uh, before, and you know, it's, I should say about Ervil at this point. Um, when, when they went uh, to the town to to shoot all those people, he had left for the United States, and he was no longer in Mexico. Smart. Uh, and so, um, where'd he go? So, 
in in the early 70s or, or, or late 80s, he had there's a family called the Chenowiths that had had joined him. Early 70s or late 80s? No, no, late 60s. I'm sorry. Early late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. Mm. And there's a family of Chenoweths. His his last uh, uh, his you know those sisters that he married. Yeah, one of them was Chenoweth. Yeah. The last one uh, was, was yeah. Rena Chenoweth. Um, and uh, I'll read about their first first night Broadway, sleeping together. Uh, oh, we get another hot account. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, the only she, thing hotter than the sex was his breath. She, and she writes in, in her book, she writes, uh, uh, For many years, through the scores of men and boys who'd been after me, somehow I'd miraculously managed to hang into my virginity until my wedding night. Continued to hang on to through my wedding night for a little while after that. Ervil LeBaron, the notorious womanizer, as the media called him, husband of 13 women and father of more than 50 kids, wasn't up to snuff when it came to consummating his four-year quest to seduce the re- elusive uh, Rena Ch- uh, uh, Chenoweth. Uh, uh, and that's what Anderson writes. He couldn't writes. stay and, awake for his And she, she writes, oh, but he tried, though. He tried and tried. He just couldn't get going. Nothing happened. You know. That's a good time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but with the Chenoweths, uh, uh, Ervil was able to... Uh, get the backing of this this one man uh, named Victor Chenoweth, who uh, was a successful business uh, man in, in Ogden, Utah. A nice house, a lot of credit cards. Cool. And, and he was the he would become the chief financier uh, f- after joining in 1974. So Earlville moved uh, to him, uh, uh, moved up to Ogden, and and started running his church out of there. Nice house, a lot of credit cards. Uh, but. Uh, the, the 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 mindset of Irville didn't stop at Irville. It is something that ran through uh, much of his group progeny, uh, not just his progeny. True uh, believers, the wives. A- Anderson Anderson uh, 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 notes a, 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 of what he says a, a flip comment from Rena Chenoweth. Uh, there's a this uh, this uh, woman named uh, Naomi Zarate, uh, who uh, was a, a, one of the plural lives of Bud Chenoweth, and um, a plural being. And she arrived in what uh, nineteen with with Bud in the seventies, and uh, in nineteen January nineteen seventy five, two of Irville's wives, uh, Vonda White and Yolanda Rios, they left Fonda Ensenada I- in their in their car with uh, with Naomi Zarate, and um, they brought uh, they all drove to uh, a lonely arroyo and a little desert area. Uh, they ordered Naomi from the car and they shot her and they killed her and they buried her in an unmarked grave and she has never been found. Fuck. Why? And the comment Rena Chenoweth made about Naomi arriving at the Chenoweth household in 1970 was that uh, her mother, Thelma, Rena says, we welcome these new members to our family, Naomi's kids, and Mon treated Naomi's children as if they were her own. Later on, they would be. Uh, Oof, hold on. These people love burying shit in the desert, man. Even people. And, uh... Uh, the, the the story the story of Irville doesn't end with him, but uh, next episode we will get to the end of Irville, and uh, I hope hopefully so. the uh, end of this uh, uh, of this saga. Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you think about the inspiration of loyalty there? Because what well, what is he really delivering besides? I don't know. I guess it's just a fucking power cult, right? Like you're in or you're out, and well, well I I think you know Irville says. Uh, you know, this woman uh, and her family, they offered me a lot of money. And uh, if they want this woman's kids, I guess. I mean, he had to sanction the murder. So. Of course, of course. But I'm just saying, like, what the fuck? What, is, what, I mean, the, the women that ca- carried it out, like, what the fuck are they getting out of it? Like, if What I, is anybody getting out? I mean, well, part of, I think a lot of this is group membership, right? Like, we're social animals and... You know, the, and, and, the and, worst thing that you can be is ostracized. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like you said, uh, versus the Manson thing. They're actual blood. It, it's a real family. Right. Um, Which give you have to give Manson credit for <laughs> is that he superseded the deficit of not actually being real blood. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know if that was like part of the plan or anything. I don't think there was a fucking plan except no. the one the CIA executed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I, I guess people just get caught up in it. It's all helter skelter. I mean, I have no fucking idea. Well, I, well, I mean, I think there, there becomes a point where, whether you know it or not, um, you have maybe some sort of like. Something in the back of your head says, Erbil's kind of just doing whatever he wants. Maybe I can, too, if I just get him to give his blessing for mm. it. Right, but also there's a thing, too, where you go, like, at what point am I expendable? Like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, the, the well, That's women, the membership the, to any group. But yeah. no, but the women leaving in the middle of the night, that's far more sane to me. Like, oh, well, yeah, but then... Just, just yeah. being like, okay, well, this is, you know, a death cult. Let's get the fuck out of here. But people like jockeying for power and being like, oh, maybe I can be like, you know, the fucking chief wife. And you, I mean, that's the same thing. You could say that about uh, any, you could say that about American capitalism. Some people continue to play the game at, at the expense of their own sanity and happiness. And some people <laughs> just go True. move to fucking, you know, a kibitz somewhere, you know, like mm. you choose to play the game or you don't. Yeah, and like you know, the the promise at the end is is a carrot on the stick, and it works for some people. And yeah. some people they never get the carrot; they continue to play, and they're fine with it. Some but people it, just go, no, "Fuck carrots <laughs> and sticks! Fuck yeah. all you owes. Get a grip, but, 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 they just but, bounce." But the the idea is, and I think it works on a lot of levels. I think it's a great metaphor. Thanks. <laughs> you think the metaphor you just made is a great metaphor? Yeah. Okay. And you're thanking yourself for the metaphor? That's good. No. Yeah. Matt, yeah. we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Later. <laughs> because there's, you know, the main thing is like, uh, you, you, uh, you know, it predates Scarface, for instance. Uh, well, not the original Scarface. Not the original Scarface. No, no, no. No, you're right. Uh, but Predates the Palmas. But, uh, but uh, you know, the idea of the Godfather 2 thing of like trying to get out. Mm -hmm. uh, but it... But it pulls you back in. But also, like, that's far more true of, like, uh, the Jewish gangsters and stuff like that, you know? Where they go, like, okay, I got a bunch of, like, you know, bodies in my backyard, but, like, my kids are just, like, going to be bankers, and they don't know shit about it. Like, mm -hmm. there's this idea of, like, wanting to get out of it. Right. And that, to me, is a much more matriarch idea about being like, okay, well, what is the end plan? Like, what's the end of the road? Because it's far more a male thing to be like, uh, I'm just the boss forever, and uh, then they eventually come in with machine guns, and I say hello, say hello to my little friend. Like, like women going along with like the suicide pact of of you know uh, this pluralist guy who just keeps taking out his spiritual enemies who also don't use guns. <laughs> right. You, you well. don't hear anything about his brothers like people taking arms against them. Right. Their paranoia about them acting like they do is completely unwarranted and never happens mm -hmm. so far mm -hmm. in the story. I'm mm -hmm. not, but you're just like, what the fuck? Like, what, what, what the fuck is going on? Like, how about subtlety? Uh, try poison or something like, like these guys want to be martyrs too. Yeah, right. You know, well, it has to be a blood atonement. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah you yeah. made me do it. I, I mean, I, I think uh, for some of the women, their power comes from being the head of the household or having kids to being, raise. Yeah, mm. being attached they, they to. Ha they have to have some use in the household mm -hmm. um, because none of them um, up until this point are holding down actual real jobs. No. Um, there's no, you know, they're not making a lot of money. They, they're all living off the land. It's not a mm -hmm. great life. It's not easy to leave. You have to flee in the middle of the night, and it's like, doesn't mean... And then what? There's not a working car necessarily, sure. right? Yeah. Um, so There's the prophecy of the hitchhiking truck. Uh. Yeah, but it's like, okay, so you can try to get out, uh, but if you don't, then you you know you're mm -hmm. dying. Right. Uh, and what are you so, going to go do? And it's the thing, too. They, maybe they, you make the best of it while you can, hoping that there's a moment where you... would and then maybe you get they're corrupted also, in the in the act of, of of being there. They're also definitely tempted for for their specific kids. Oh yeah, to be the inheritor of the mantle, 
which will never get named. Right. And and that's the brilliance of that system is that, oh, we'll just balkanize the women. Yeah. Get them to fight amongst themselves about which kids fight for their sons. Yeah. 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 Oh, my son's the one. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's the greatest like power move ever is, is just balkanizing the underlings and yeah, yeah, it, fight it, amongst themselves for your power and in the meantime just fucking stack up the monopoly bucks and, and the women the women don't have any any real Park po- place any real power and so there's, there's multiple stories of the the men if the women aren't acting like the men like the men won't talk to them for a year or something or they'll they're or they're just they'll they'll insult them in front of everybody else and so right. not, not only are the the women now being cast down but now they're you, you assume their children probably are too or maybe their children will be taken like will will be right. you know convinced to leave their mother and so right. all of a sudden the mother now has no kids right. isn't liked by anybody in this giant family she's in yes so, then so. then she ages out of reproductive age right. and- but also there's the the thing of uh in in the age of uh, uh and we're talking about the 70s no, no, no! It sounds like a Game of Thrones. Like, oh, we're yeah, this is eleven. No, that was that was more civil. They named heirs. <laughs> this thing was like, you know, it's fucking Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> On, you know, I'm I'm not gonna say anybody's name. And then I'm gonna have them all go schizophrenic and declare themselves. How about that? You know, how about that bankrupt? But in the uh, you know, RSTLNE. That's all you got, man. Figure the rest out yourself. Like I was saying, the uh, uh, when there was uh, the suffrage. Or else die. A lot of the, uh, you know, the sister wives, you know, mm-hmm. came out and and they, and they would uh, advocate to vote. And they would also advocate for the right of being sister wives because they were saying, we actually kind of control the man more as a little bit of a hen house. Right, right. Uh, there is, there's an argument to be made for that. There is. And that's very much the argument that's sort of made a little bit with like the big love show and stuff when they like kind yeah. of talked about yeah. uh, the modern version of what. Uh, right. A polygamist uh, marriage would be like right. So- it, it, yeah, it's just that over the arc of history, when the resources are overwhelmingly controlled by the men, that has not been the case. Right. Well, I, you- I think if there were a modern ver- like I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a lot. E- it's it's a lot harder for a man to control three women. Yes, and well. especially if it's it's if, but if- one, but it, it one person in general can pit three people against each other very easily by whispering in their ears. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I think in this scenario, I, it, it's built to control them easily. Yeah. No, yeah, no. And this is, it's very much the opposite of what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, th- and this, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty much a death cult. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. a yeah. thing of... Uh, if you remove, like, uh, hysterical religion from the equation, having... Um, how about How about this? Keep hysterical religion in the equation and just remove actually removing people. <laughs> because, <laughs> because once you know people get removed, you don't want to be. Right. So where are you going to go? Right. Close to Ervil in his stinky breath. <laughs> just turn the other cheek, like Jesus said. So you don't have to <laughs> yeah, smell you have to the smell stinky it. breath. Yeah, it's it's it, it that uh, you're in survival mode now. Yeah. You you know that he's taking out two brothers, uh, you know wives. He disagrees. Like it's 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 over. Like yep. like the whole thing is, just don't get on the bad side of verbal. It, it is the thing with the, you know uh you know, being in a house with like an abusive dad or whatever. Like the thing of like just keep him happy. Just, just keep yeah, happy. Yeah. yeah, that that sort of thing. Um, but with far higher stakes. Right. And lots more people involved, right. which is now going to create everybody like on like working on a level where it's like, okay, do they suck? Uh, fuck, do they? I don't know. Shit, should they be the next sacrificial lamb? Like all of that stuff, you know, to protect my kids. Just should- kill the guy. Uh, right. That that's kind of what? The thing. Fucking Stalin. Just kill. He's afraid of you. Kill him. Yeah. Just stop him. Yeah. Everyone's just so fucking c- caught up. Yeah. All thing- you got to do is kill the guy. No, yeah. it's that simple. I mean, it I- is. Yeah, but. Because they'll do, I, they I, do I, it I, all the time. They yeah. always kill. Yes. Those guys always kill the guy. Yeah, but it's not the easiest ask of somebody to go kill somebody. I think the history uh, per- was per- 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 particularly wrong. Particularly not in that religion. 
No, I mean, it just in general. In I general, think if you ask to, if, killing uh, somebody is hard. I agree with you. Yes, it it's, is against it's a hard it, ask. It's a hard ask. Uh, but given uh, context determines how hard it is, right? People have been killing people for as long as people have been making people. Yeah. Sure. You know what? It, sure, they have. No, yeah, I know, but but it was it, make, it doesn't make it any easier. It was much more streamlined in ancient Rome for some reason, wasn't it? What? Just taking out the chief. No. Dude, the average length of a Caesar's rule was like 19 months. Yeah. It, it was, they, they were yeah, just. Yeah, but, but who was doing that? Who was killing the guy? Usually some sort of soldier or guard. Oh, are there no, family being involved? Senate being involved? There was just a thing of a like. Horse. It was just a thing of like, listen, if, he, if, if we all agree he's going down the wrong path. Uh, that is That is far too simplistic. To be like, well, it was so like well, it's, it's ob- just been easily because, done. It's been easily done over the years. And obviously, you're right because it doesn't happen that often. Yeah, and when they did it, it was incredibly destructive. But but you but it's also incredibly destructive to let those people keep well, doing their I, thing. I know, but that's why clearly murder is not the easiest thing. Well, yeah, and they but also for, th- for those people it is. They, well, they have to be driven to the point of it. Right. So this but, is but the, the point. The, the point these, we're these, making these, is these why people, is it so we. Because he's not. It's, Listen, I'm not advocating for murder. I know, but I'm saying you can't just go. Well, just murder him because we're advocating for certain murders. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's not that simple as just go. Well, why, why doesn't somebody just murder this guy? Because it, they don't have it well, in them. We, no, there's a lot of people waking up being like, "Tomorrow, would life be easier if this dude would just didn't have a head?" Dude, they there's fucking they don't, they don't know that. They know what they know. They know that what life Hitler's is. Hitler's own him. people try to kill him. Yeah, twice. Yes, and a lot of them didn't. Right. Even though they should have. Exactly. That's what. That's the point I'm making. Is that they should. No, they. It's. Not. It's so easy. It's one guy. <laughs> it's, it's one guy. Matt the is, act of what, killing. What Matt is saying is Herbal 2024. Yeah, <laughs> the, the act. Make act of killing. It's not just the easiest thing to do. No, it's very it's, mentally, it's physically. It's in, it is. That's why you send other people to do it. That's exactly right. That's why Irvel did because there is a p- certain per- percentage of the population for for. So who, who in this group is going to send someone else to do it? To do what, Irvel? Yeah, we do all the time. No, who? In the, no, I mean not in this our group. I mean, oh, in the Irvel's group, who? Which one of them is going to go? Well, I can't do it. Can you? Because the moment they say that, then they're dead. Well, no, they don't say. They it. hire some Mexican to do it for half the price. They're in Mexico. <laughs> and other hot things. <laughs> Muy caliente. They're living worse off than most people there. It's because there's all these Mormons that are taking all the good jobs. I mean, the Mormons are li- living worse off than the Mor- these people. Well, live- yeah, they're killing each other. Yeah. What I'm saying is, one guy has so much power, and all you got to do is take him out. That's all. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's just, but I mean, but, it, but you also saw he him do it. He's doing through, it so through, much. through your church like two times over. There's got to be a point where you go like, why don't we just take that? When guy out? when is it my wife? When is it my kid? What don't we just kill Ervil? Like when Stalin was like, like hunkered down in his bunker and he, he was worried he about his own people fucking coming in to kill him and they're knocking on the door and he's like, what the fuck? And they go, what, what, what do you want what us to do? do? But that speaks to Matt's point. Exactly. Exactly. There's yeah. a psychological block that we have, and I understand it. I'm perplexed by it. Yes. Yes. That's exactly. All I'm saying. Yes. Well, I mean, it seems like it'd be. Uh... If you are the leader in an authoritarian, murderous regime, murder shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. Everybody gets thrown out the window in, in Russia, but you know. Oh yeah. By Putin. Everybody falls out of the four-story window, and they have polonium poisoning. Yeah. It's no, not that well, hard. It, it's easy for Irvil to tell people to kill people, but he's never killed anybody. No, I agree. We, we, we're all in we're so making age. the same point. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the nerve to get amongst the people to stop the main murderer in chief is very hard to come by. Yeah, to this day. Yeah. Um, but it, it is a thing where we all look at the stories as they play out repeatedly, and we, and we go, go like, "Why didn't somebody we go like, just why fucking it, murk why this it, guy?" Why but you it? know why? Because most people don't have that extra one percent of murderous yes. ability. Yeah, which is good. Uh, yeah, it's good until your friends uh, are dead. Yeah, and then you go like, "I wish I was a little bit of a murderer." Uh, maybe if everybody had a little one <laughs> percent, there wouldn't be that other guy who had the extra ten percent. Yeah, well, maybe there'd be way more of them. I don't know. We gotta play that out. <laughs> the world needs bad men. 
to keep other bad men from the door. See? True Detective solves everything. <laughs> well, we've done it again. Matt, that was absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to hear more about it. I really, uh, oh, I really can't wait to, to wade in the cesspool of where this is going to go. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put on my b- fucking long underwear. I am, too. hole in the sheet. I'm going to the Velcro around the cock. Uh-huh. Everything. Yeah. Mm. Balls. Slapping against Uranus, uh, which is the planet I'll get when I die. I agree. The volcano. Um, <laughs> testic- the volcano. T- testicular is one of the... <laughs> testicular <laughs> heaven. Testicular. Where you yeah. rule your own volcano. <laughs> Fellas, I love you. I'm going to say goodnight. My name is John Fahey. I'm Aaron Pita. Good night, so. Good night, everybody. We love you. Good night. Mr. Ed kills Mr. Hand. <laughs> Stop and stop